Hello, welcome back. We are Hello. live. That's not my mind. Well, that is, but uh, we are live. <laughs> I'm back. Welcome. Hi. Got, got the whole crew here. Wags, right. Donkey, Wombat. Yeah. We're back right. together again. Where's Luna? Yeah. No She's Luna off, cam? Uh, monitoring the storm. We've got uh, heavy rain, winds, and all the things right now. I'm on backup generator power, so thank you um, for that. Um, Donkey. Yeah. How's your weekend? Well, <laughs> I spent the whole weekend with you, dude. So yeah, it was, it was yeah, saying. it was a drill weekend. We just uh, you know, yeah. uh, freedom was on us this weekend. No big deal. Um, and yeah, it was a good drill weekend. Now I'm back home, uh, kind of hunkering down for the same storm. So I'm in my yeah. my uh, temporary office here, and she's rocking and rolling with all the wind. So yeah, yeah. wombat, welcome back. We haven't seen you this year. It's been it's been a minute. I realized that I literally just plugged in my mic as I was waiting for your two it's minutes. Nice to do that. I was yeah. like, I hadn't. I just I'm out of I'm out of practice. So thanks for having me. Welcome back, and uh, wags. Welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> We've got a lot to talk about today with your 2024 and beyond. We do lots and, of questions uh, out there. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about DCS, and we also need to talk about Gonkey's P51 versus Hornet. Thing, <laughs> apparently, Gonkey. I has, know uh, the Gonky. skill that that people saw was amazing. I get it, dude. It's it's no big deal. <sighs> no. <laughs> No, Gonky, just just tell them, just tell them, please, just clear the air. Oh, just me and you having a good time, man. I, that's the thing that kills me is I can't move her and I just play the game. Sorry, simulation Ooh. Ooh. and have fun. Ooh. You know. No. Yeah. So I guess the controversy is Gonky said, "What is that thing doing that?" Because of course, it's it's always surprising to him when I win. <laughs> Even though that's the standard. I'm used to real um, life. Sorry. I won there too. What are you wow. talking about? Wow. Anyway, um, so uh, people thought that that was a commentary on the flight model, which was not. Gonky is not qualified to comment, make commentary on the flight model. No. So, you know, of you would fight the P fifty one like you like they did, like the ME two six two guys fought the P fifty one. They don't. You don't get a turning fight with it. You do slashing attacks. You have to use the speed advantage, right? So, but. We're doing guns only, just having a, a good time sets. at, a a, at two hundred knots. Right. So we are, we are fighting the P fifty ones game and just seeing how the Hornet does essentially. And it's pretty amazing because you know modern fighter jets are pretty powerful, but it's for somebody who has really no experience with World War II era fighters other than watching stuff on TV. DCS is the closest thing I could ever experience to like comparing the two. And it's, <laughs> it's eye opening. And even, I mean, mover can agree with me, right? It's, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's, it's pretty humbling. Let's buy a P51. <laughs> is that yeah, not start a GoFundMe? All right. Well, uh, What's all you got to do is live in an Airstream. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> be uh, anyway, what anyway moving on to our topic. Well, first, Wombat, did you have a good weekend? Yeah, it was good. That was okay. pretty low key. Sure. Pretty low key weekend. Wags, good weekend. Good. Yeah, got to jump on a lot of reading. Nice. Yeah. Wife's in Japan right now, so quiet oh, house. Nice. Yeah. Well, we got a Japan mishap to talk about, but first, mm -hmm. yep. in the break, yeah, actually, news category, sure, that makes him feel great. That's a great yeah. segue. <laughs> yeah. She was actually. She didn't airline. get there by a hot air balloon, so I'm pretty sure that was not a great segue. Yeah. So she <laughs> was. Uh, same airline, same airport, only separated by a couple hours. Wow. Yeah, I know. That kind of freaked us both out. Wow. Yeah, that's wow. crazy. All right. That's wow. So Good job, Mover. <laughs> Next. Well, we're, we're not talking about that one first. The first one we're talking about is Alaska Airlines. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you knew this, Gonky, but Alaska Airlines has uh, a new fleet of 747s <laughs> that are now grounded. Nice After a piece of the plane wall detached midair. Yeah, well, you know, dude, the seven fours are getting old, and you know, for short they haul are. use, it's probably the best airplane. <laughs> yeah, was it the wall? I mean, was it was it even is any of that right? But anyway, here we go. Yeah, picture is uh, all. Yeah, yeah. 
it's like the door it's like the emergency yeah. door oh yeah yeah, yeah. so right. here's what it is door plug flew off alaska airlines plane in flight found in the backyard and i saw pictures this morning of an iphone that was recovered intact not cracked what? and it made the sixteen thousand foot drop what kind of case was it in that's like that's, that's gold question. that yeah. is like marketing it's gold a, it's a great question <laughs> uh so the ntsb says the plug covering an unused exit door so it was the exit door uh, that blew out minutes into an alaska, alaska airlines flight friday evening has been found uh that is a picture of what happened uh basically they were taking off and this thing uh decided to uh have a rapid unscheduled disassembly and the thing that I wanted to talk about, and because we're going to listen to the audio and break it down. I'm sorry, Wombat. I've got you covered by the uh, old banner there. Fine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing we're going to talk about, and I'm glad Wombat's here because he's a professional, is the comm, because once again, there's controversy. Uh, but so she said the flight crew heard a bang and the cockpit door blew open. Wow. From the depressurization. So they immediately put their masks on. The communication cockpit in between crew and the cabin and cockpit was very difficult. It slammed the cockpit door into the front restroom door, damaging the restroom door. And it took flight attendant three tries to get the cockpit door to close again. So she's fighting hypoxia up there trying to close the door. Uh, the QRC uh, that's within easy reach also flew out the door. It was very loud and chaotic. And... In other news, the CVR was completely overwritten because nobody pulled the circuit breaker. So, a um, lot of stuff is happening there. Uh, we'll talk about what happened as we go, but NTSB is investigating. There were no fatalities. And the MAX, 7379 MAX, has been grounded pending inspections, and that's worldwide. All of these have been uh, grounded you know, and that's now in addition to all the other issues the Max has, which we'll talk about that here in a second. But um, initial thoughts, gentlemen, while I pull up the actual video. If that thing was in my front yard, that door would be on a wall forever in my house. <laughs> forever. That'd be awesome. Forever. Mover does the, so the cockpit door blew open? Yes. When it, and then got caught me, on the lav. Yeah. So in the seven three, I mean, it locks right. Like when you like, mm -hmm. hey, when you're like clear to close, see you later. And the you know mm -hmm. the flight shut the door. They all lock, it. dude. But that depressurization, it, it overpowered lock that good. I don't know, man. Okay, all right. So I've hit that door pretty hard trying to get it to close, <laughs> and it well, seems quite sturdy. Yeah, you're wow. not okay. as strong as physics as I used to be. I know. Donkey is the physics. Yeah. <laughs> I am the science, damn it. Mm -hmm. Ooh, should we do that? Is that better? No. Yeah, what altitude, uh, what altitude uh, were they at? Uh, uh, we'll good. talk about that in a second, but I think. Okay. Where did uh, all that go? I have, there he is. I have completely gotten into a PIO here. You just put just put it up. Get rid of us. There we go. Oh, boy, that works. There nice. we go. All right. All right, so let us begin. We're going to listen to the audio. I'll stop it as we go for comments, concerns, questions. Thanks to Vast uh, Aviation for that. And let me know if you can or cannot hear the audio once it begins. Uh, yeah, we're about to go down. Are you hearing that? I'm sorry, last aircraft again? Last aircraft again? We've got an Alaska uh, trouble to uh, declare an emergency. We're descending down to 10,000. We'll see pictures. Alaska Paul AC, Roger. Descend and maintain 10,000. And when able, uh, give me the nature of the emergency and your intentions. Okay. So, first thing, this is another controversy because last week, Wombat, I don't know if you watched the show, but we of talked I about. Did, but specifically, talk about what you're. Controversies. We talked about the uh, 737 MAX that took birds at New Orleans and did a great job of coming back. And, and in the comments, it was, well, they didn't do it right because they said uh, um, very coolly uh, Southwest whatever emergency versus mayday, 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 pan, 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 help me, help me, help me, et cetera. Uh-oh. What? What happened? I lost my screen for a second. It's back now. Um, <laughs> So they said, and like in this case too, and, and she did the same thing. 
she she basically said we're declaring an emergency descending down to ten thousand. we got depressurized um and are i know they're teaching at the schoolhouse at least they're teaching us because of iko they want you to say mayday 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 but i don't know a single military pilot that would ever say that no i i don't either and um and it's i think they're both interchangeable at this point still um we're the we're the to my understanding and again i'm just a domestic pilot slash uh instructor but where the pan 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 or mayday 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 comes from is like when you're on the track system and you're not necessarily talking to anybody specifically you're not under radar control uh so you're just going to throw out there to the world hey fyi we have an issue and we're descending period or we're coming off the tracks or we're doing whatever right whereas yeah. in this case when you're in a radar controlled environment with ATC declaring the emergency is what would be expected because you notice the air traffic controller immediately goes, okay, well, just like you are probably trained, just like we've all been trained, you know, as soon as you say the words, we're declaring an emergency, it's going to be state the nature of your emergency, souls on board, fuel on board, because they have their little, they're pulling their checklist to do. So yeah. um, I think this was 100% handled correctly as of this point, frankly. There's you can whole... hear them, they're already on the masks at this point. Yeah, and, and that's, yeah. that's, that's the other piece. So there's a whole discussion on the social media, especially X or Twitter or whatever it is about, well, they didn't do that. And I'm, Mayday irks me because it's wasted calm. It is. Because, you know, un unless it's like a, unless it's congested and you can't get a word in edgewise, but aviate, nav navigate, communicate may be a cliche, but at this point, it's, it's a directive. We are descending. We are an emergency. And here's what we're doing. We're not asking. This is not a request. This is here's what's going on. Questions um, right. on that. And Agreed. the other thing I looked up. So there, they. The reason I brought the article up first is because I wanted to get the backstory. So this is like another one of those classic simulator scenarios where you're getting your butt kicked because bang, I like this. doors open, QRCs out the window you're depressurized the alarm's going off because in the boeing you know you got the the bell that it's going off because you've depressurized and it's rapid now time of useful consciousness at twenty thousand feet or less which they were at sixteen thousand, i think is 30 minutes or more so it's not an immediate hypoxia risk but it's a let's put our masks on immediately and masks are pressure breathing it's very hard to talk and it's very hard to maneuver and recheck lists and all that stuff with all that going on. Gone I agree. agree. Yeah, you know, everybody complained about the comm. Like, the way I look at all these is if Alaska 1282 didn't make one radio call and they just squawk 7700 and they turn around and land and everybody lived, I'd be like, nice job. Great mm -hmm. job. You know, all right, like taking a look at some things that we can all learn from. Hey, you know, next time maybe declare an emergency, you know, over the radio. Well, they know. did. I, no, no, they I'm just saying. Made it, made it. Yeah. I'm just saying the most important thing is, you know, the, this crew aviated. And, you know, <laughs> uh, I've never been in a real depressurization, but I think uh, us three have done it in the chamber. And it's, it's uh, if you're not ready for it, it's quite an eye-opening event. Um, you know, you're sitting there cruising along and I, I can just imagine, you know, they don't have a tray table, right. But they're probably getting their snacks out and, you know, probably getting the well, magazine. They're, still out. they're, they're, they're not even top of climb. So they're still yeah. working. Oh, yeah, okay. well, they're, they're above they're, 10. I mean, above 10. Yeah. So they're, 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 they're switching chilling. gears. They're in a cruise yeah. more. So. Yeah. Yeah. They're talking about the contract, whatever. And then all of a sudden <laughs> there's an, it's a literal explosion. The merger. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Fog doors flying open. That's a People's good point going, too. Is, I mean, is dude, fog, they have no idea all the windshield, yes. everything fogged up. You know, I mean, yes, yes, it's dude. cold. It, in that moment, it's like, did did we just blow up? Is it was it a yeah. bomb? Do we is hit somebody? It? Like, do we have wings? What's going yeah. on? Hundred I mean, percent. Yeah. To you know, if it's me, I probably key the mic and you know scream like a little girl. I don't know, but kind of uh, like if you hit a coyote on a back road. That was uh, you, bro. Oklahoma. <laughs> it was you screaming. Don't even start me. But uh, I've heard that scream. The So we're actually doing a training. Uh, CQ, this cycle, actually is uh, all our pilots, at least on, on the Airbus fleet, are coming back and doing oxygen mass training 
um, they're on the mask in the sim for 30 minutes. And I'll tell you, I don't do, I know, I don't, I know, I know. Mm. Um, but we all did it too as instructors. And I, I do a lot of the day two, the maneuvers valve more so than the day one. And I'll tell you every one of those guys, I'll ask them, Hey, what'd you think? And they're like, it sucked, but (laughs) thanks for making us do it because there's so much that comes out of it. Everything you said, mover, it's hard to see. It's hard to talk, let alone if you have glasses, if you wear glasses, no, get it. Um, yeah. If you're the captain and you're reading through all the checklists, right? I mean, that's miserable. If and you're your the QRC and just went out the fly, window. <laughs> well, that's another factor. So, I mean, you know, there's all these things we're trying to do. And this is just in a sim environment. So, I mean, obviously we can't replicate everything, but it's, I'll tell you, it's very eye opening. And, and uh, I thought of it when we did this. So, yeah. So, Little question: what, what would the passengers hear in this case? Not a lot. It'd be loud. Not a lot. Noise, wind noise, uh, the the bang, the wind noise, and the mass. Oh, I'm sorry. I, from the I mean, more from the from the crew. Probably not a lot initially okay. because of how busy they are. Mm. Honestly, I mean, yeah. it's definitely the. I will tell you not to be. And again, everybody's their own pilot, right? But if this is my situation, my number one thing is flying the dang airplane and making sure. Because, yeah. like Gonky said, mm. I have no idea. You know, did we hit somebody? Do we have control issues? Do we did? Is this a terrorist act? Is this I mean, and then you have no idea. And this happened. If you remember the remember the Southwest one that happened where. Yeah. The fatality. Yeah. And the uh, I remember listening to the captain and she was like, I didn't know how bad it was. I didn't even know what we were dealing with. Right. And that was, in my opinion, I'm not trying to diminish what they do, but I mean, this to me with that hole, when I saw the picture, this sounds way worse from a noise, chaotic, what's going on, especially if your cockpit door opens, because now you're right there with them. So you're hearing all that stuff too. The screaming. If that yeah, would have happened, mean, I'm sure. if that would have happened at 30,000 feet, all those people would have died. Yeah. Because the pressure differential would have been so much more because at 16,000 feet, it's not much. A couple of, maybe a PSI. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with that. I mean, 30,000 feet, your time of useful consciousness. No, no, is... the airplane, the, the structure of the airplane. Man. Oh, you, you think the, you the, think the airplane would have come apart? At, at, yeah, at, possibly. Yeah. With a hold yeah, up. That's a different possibly. argument. I, I'm i just talking hypoxia. What's the, I was yeah. trying to remember it. How long do the mass give you? Is it 30 minutes? Mm hmm. In the it's, back, yeah. not in the front. In the back, the 30, the mass is dropped down. Sure it's, it's it's it gives you like up to fourteen thousand yeah. feet, um, thirty minutes or something like that. Yeah, it's only designed basically to allow you to get your butts down below ten. That's it. Yeah, really. I mean, so all right. Yeah, well, it's pretty that, crazy. Anyway, with that in mind, let's get continue. But uh, I, this was also addressed in the in the comments because everybody. As soon as they hear a woman, right, they're going to be misogynist and be like, well, she sounds panicked. She sounds like she's wearing a mask. That's what she sounds like to me. She sounds like a lot of bad things just happened. The startle factor is there and they're working it as fast and as efficiently and as smoothly as they can while wearing a mask in some very uncomfortable situation at night. And anybody, yeah. anybody would be on edge. I mean, I, you take the, yeah. the hardest, baddest dude. He's was this on? <laughs> was it night? I, I, I might be wrong on that. Was this at night? I thought it was a night a, a night thing. I might be wrong. So I, it looks dark on your radar scope. That's so what I was like. Night. That's probably <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> it's uh, got to be nighttime, or else it would be yeah. like blue, right? I mean, yeah. Okay, we need to descend down to ten thousand. We just need to keep pressure. Pressure is to try maintain ten thousand, and we need to return back to Portland. She's yelling because it's and Portland, uh, Seattle, Alaska, it's Portland, yeah. so we need to turn and back to Portland. It, real quick, I have another. This is an interesting point that I don't think a lot of people think about um, in commercial aviation, right? So as military guys. We've all done it, right? You take off, something goes bang, you come back around and land. It's almost a not a non-issue, but it's you you practice it. I'll ask Gonky Mover, how many times have you practiced taking off out of an airport with an intent to go somewhere else? And at the la- at the second after takeoff or on your climb out, we go, Nope, you're coming right back to that airport. Like it's not the, the pacing sim. you're used to. Well, that's the, the point. Sim. So this yeah. is just the fact of getting this aircraft that was ready to go wherever it was going. 
and get all the systems set up to come back to Portland quickly while you're dealing with all this, that's another layer, in my opinion, of just stuff you don't do, if that makes sense. So anyway, I just thought of that. There's a lot going yeah. on here. <clears throat> a lot. Yeah. They're yeah. Very it was Friday they evening. Great job, man. <clears throat> so it was, it was dark, by the way. I looked it up. Oh, yeah. Because like yeah. it was nighttime. Well, that too. But it was nighttime. Yeah. And well, night this stuff scary. doesn't happen on a nice sunny clear night. Day, night is be scary just because it's night. Now add yeah. fogged up, uh, everything plus that mask. That mask is terrible. It's it is not, not comfortable. <laughs> it is not like a fire pilot mask. Is it different? Do you have any idea what it is looks like compared to like an air? Like I don't know the difference. I'm it's assuming the they're one, all pretty close. It's the same container. You you press the two fingers, it opens up. You put it over, and then so it it's probably the same mask. Feels to your face, mask. and then yeah. it's it's pressure breathing. I mean, it's yeah, it's a it's a pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah. no bueno. It's, it sounds. Like it. Yes, we need a we need a deserved we declared an emergency and we have hundred and seventy seven passengers on board and we have our fuel is eighteen thousand nine hundred. Wow. Hey Portland approach to Alaska twelve eight two emergency aircraft from now leveling twelve thousand and left turn heading three four zero. Twelve thousand she's in Alaska twelve eight two phone approach, good afternoon. You uh, still have information to do. Yeah, we do have information to do. We'd like to get lower if possible. Realize also, it's not flat terrain. Yeah, it's it's not New yeah. Orleans. It's <laughs> yeah. mountainous all the way around there. Yep. Just to maintain oh, 7,000 yeah. Alaska 1282. Controllers are doing a great oh, job. Alaska 1282, did you fire it? Did you fire an emergency or just need to return to the Yes, we are emergency. Nice we are depressurized. We do need to return back to. We have 177 passengers. Still is 18.8. Class 1282, Roger. And do you need time to burn off some fuel before you land? Negative. Negative so, Heavyweight landing potential. Yeah. Well, just so people are aware, Wombat, correct me. My assumption here is this is the FO talking as the pilot monitoring and the captain is physically flying. Okay. So that's a, uh, that's a good point. Um, it depends on how they train. So what I'll tell you, is this is if it was done textbook the way we train, it's actually the FO flying and talking while the captain is running whatever checklist, et cetera. And then at some point, you know, my brief is, hey, when we get close to final, get me back in the loop. So if you hear a voice change towards the end, which I haven't listened to this, so I don't know, that would <clears throat> that would be that. But it could very well be the FO talking and flying. Um, I'll tell you right now, if it's me, I'm not flying this airplane. The FO is flying this airplane. I got way more things to worry flying about. Flying and talking or just flying? Initially, my FO would be flying and talking while I deal with okay. everything else. And then once I deal with everything else, especially if that door's open, I mean, you got a lot of stuff as the captain yeah. that you're trying to figure out. I pawn off the flying and the talking to the FO. And then once I get all that squared away and kind of in one sock, if you will, then I'll come back in the loop. I'm probably going to take the comms back, but I'm going to let the FO fly. There's there's not an FO that I fly with that isn't perfectly capable of landing the plane on any given day. So I don't yeah. need to think about that, you know, especially if it's not a controllability issue. If it's controllability type thing, I might take it back only because, you know, it's kind of like the old adage of I'm going to try to land on the longest runway, even if I don't need it, because when I'm in the dirt at the end of it, at least I could say I landed on the longest runway. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's kind of... Yeah. Call, maybe that was the Navy that beat that into me. But, but <laughs> in this case, it could, yeah, it could very well be that the <clears throat> that is the FO uh, flying and talking. But I will tell you, and I'm not trying to sound, it sounds like just the way she's speaking, it may be the captain. Just okay. the things she said. I think it was in the Southwest that you referenced earlier, it was the captain talking. Like when you hear talking, the comms, yeah, it was so. the captain talking. Yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> Ooh, is that how you do Go ahead. I mean, is that how you guys, like in your experience, is that how they, they do it? <clears throat> it? It was, so it was in the sim, at least it was always whatever the captain, they gave the captain the option because captain's authority on how they wanted to run it. And a lot of captains would do that where bang, you're an emergency. Okay. FO, you fly, I'll talk or you fly and talk until we get a plan and then we'll go from there. Yeah. Okay. Ready for the approach now. You need to wait. That's okay. 
We need about 10 minutes for Alaska 12 82. I like that. Take as much time as you need. We'll let you know, Alaska 12 82. You know, we need time you to get You can tell that this situation has calmed down a bit. Mm-hmm. Just from the way they're talking. Are you getting your okay at 7 or do you want lower? I think they're off the mask now. And Portland, Alaska, yeah. 12 82. We are ready for the approach and we'd like to do the yeah, approach. They've, they've transitioned they've from a catastrophic mode of we don't know if we're going to be able to fly this airplane to, okay, we can fly it. Let's make sure we cover our bases Yeah. so we don't make this bad situation worse by missing. Yeah, safely landing. You could just hear that in their voice. That's phenomenal. And, and the mask is most likely off by now, you think? Probably 7,000 feet. I would think so. If I can the get radar uh, environment. If it's. If I can get that mask off, it's coming off because I can just communicate, see better. And the article did say they closed the door. So, you know, the 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 flight attendant was able to close the cockpit door. Yeah. Yeah. So that that takes away some of that external chatter in the back. The chaos. Can you get down from there? You want to give you a box around to get down? We can get down, Alaska, probably too. Alaska 12 82, no problem. Like, clear, clear you from there. It looks like you're on a warplane. Uh, clear for the approach, Alaska 12 82. Alaska 12 82, and I just want to verify no problem. Thinking defend, we could back you back around for another approach if you like. I think we got it, Alaska 12 82. They- this is the, I, I like it. ATC just trying to make sure they're not slam dunking them because, you know, you can get comp- time compression and compressed to the field and airliners are hard to slow down, especially the, when you're heavy and you're just making this emergency return. You've got a lot going on. You know, I mean, I appreciate the fact that they're like, hey, we can we can get you around again if you need to. You know, don't feel like you have to. Sure. You have to make this approach happen. But I, I also like, and where they're, my guess that they're looking at that without looking at FOQA data is that they probably are a little high and fast compared to a normal approach. Well, 7,000 right feet. Yeah. If you, yeah, if you so probably, they're, if you they're, look at where they are on the localizer, it's probably higher than yeah, that. Yeah. They're, they're probably not where people or where airliners yeah. typically come in. So that's why they're offering it. But I also do like the crew being like, no, we're going to do some pilot stuff here. Cause again, I guarantee you, they, they probably, I mean, man, if I'm hearing a, a door blew out, I'm assuming that we've lost people. That's that's in the back of my mind right now. I have to be that way. And it's like, okay, there's a balance between a box pattern and do I get this thing on the ground to save more lives? You know what I mean? Yeah. So they're, I, I commend them for what they're doing a lot. They're, yeah. Thank you. Good. Last 12, 82, no problem. Contact and she's polite. Yeah. Have a good night. 2377, good night. Yeah, we're back to normal comps now. <laughs> Yeah. Good night. Life. So in Tower 22, we're on the ILS to last emergency aircraft. Last 1282, Portland Tower, wind 160 at 11, runway 28 left. Total land at runway 2 at left, Alaska 1282. So that might have been the captain the whole time. There's your pictures. Yep. <clears throat> at the door. That's wild, uh, man. Yeah. That's wild. <clears throat> it's a plug style. Like that yeah. shit. Yeah. It happened. shouldn't come out. Yeah. It's wild. Well, that's why they're grounded now uh, while they <laughs> yeah, figure this out. Oh, so the, the only thing. Cursed. Um, they landed the safely and taxied in the, uh, to the gate. Nobody was sitting there from what that's I understand. Amazing. Yeah, I wonder if this is going to make it easier to get the exit row <laughs> now. <because laughs> you gonna what I'm deadheading. <laughs> to be like, all these yeah. exit yeah. rows are open. <laughs> all the exit <laughs> rows are always open. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, um, so what did we learn from this? Number one, great job. A hundred percent. Great job. They handled this just like the Southwest, uh, folks last time they, they told ATC what they were doing, what they needed. They handled the emergency and everybody got safely back on the ground. What else, what else can you ask for? Doors that don't yeah. blow out randomly. The hatch just blew, right? Yeah. <laughs> the hatch just I would blew. ask for that. That's what, in my <laughs> airliners, I asked for the plane to come back in the same One structural piece. rigidity that it took off with. But that might be too much. I don't know. So, but yeah. I, would I still fly on a 737 Max? Yes. I don't think this this is a indicative no. of a, well, not a, right a, now. You wouldn't, but they're, well, they're not uh, I mean, in general, do I think it's yeah. a it's a you know, as much as I have 
voiced my displeasure with that airplane. I don't think with as much as it flies and with as much as, you know, sure. I mean, airlines trust it. I don't think it's a, 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 an inherent problem. Like, I think it's, it's one a of bad, these things. It's a they'll do some inspections. That it's that they'll fix it. Plane. Yeah. 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 But it was a new airplane. <clears throat> it only had like four days on it. Mm. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I get to go pick up a new <laughs> airplane soon. Don't that means it has a warranty. Like We're good. Yeah, but that's from France. That's true. Bonjour. <laughs> Germany, actually. Okay. Uh, Wags, you got anything for this? No, I guess the only thing you know kind of struck me was you know, I imagine there's a lot of adrenaline pumping with her. And the fact that she kept it, you know, pretty calm. Yeah. I think it was yeah. pretty telling as well. Yeah. I, I don't, also I don't like sorry. Go ahead, Gonky. I was going to say, I mean, uh, people also have to, you know, the the haters, right? The, the critiquers, um, they got to realize most airline pilots and Wombat Crepin were wrong. will go through their entire career with every day, just take off, put the wheels up, put them down, land to the gate. Go Hopefully home. Like, that's the goal. Right. That's <laughs> that's the norm. And, you know, you know, we get training on stuff like this, but it's not like everyday training. Right. It's not like every day going to the gym. It's once every nine months or or six months or a year. It's, yeah, you know, and, and you don't you don't have enough time to to go through every scenario. So, mm -hmm. you know, just the uh, well, that's why yeah. the aviate navigate communicate. It's like the, the basic blueprint to surviving, you know, uh, any kind of thing like this that happens. And like, you know, just watching. We've seen two of these now and it's just like, wow, that's amazing. Because, you know, hopefully that's the last time those pilots and flight attendants will ever have. You know, hopefully that's their little career. <laughs> yeah. And, and they're done. And, and to your point, I mean, especially, you know, Wombat talking about, I don't know what structurally this aircraft is. Dude, if that door had hit a stab. Oh, dude. Um, yeah. You, know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, if that yeah. door had hit something structural. Mm -hmm. Like this is a this is not just a oh we lost a door you know very I lucky mean, very lucky and and they're lucky the surrounding structure you Out. know didn't have problems yeah. too you know I mean when you're putting that much air load on something that's not meant to put air load on it can be dangerous so yep. um, very fortunate that this is something we can talk about obviously we're not going to speculate on causes or anything let the investigation do its thing but. Dude, this is one of those things you talk about at the schoolhouse and you learn from. Oh, yeah. And oh, kudos I guarantee to the crew. you they are. I mean, yeah. we don't have the max, but I guarantee you they are here as yeah. well. Kudos to the crew for doing that. Yep. So uh, going to the audience, uh, we've got, I almost forgot about him because Doug's not here. Sorry, Doug, couldn't make it tonight <laughs> or today. Yeah. Big Chi says, not sure if you've seen an elephant walk at Beale yet. Pretty damn cool. Have you ever participated in elephant walk planning? How difficult is it? No. I yeah, they did that's the elephant walk thing, with the U2. Right? Yeah, I don't understand the point, but that's yeah, just so me. That, I was going to actually put that uh, as one of the things to talk about because I'm like, I don't understand the point of this. Like, they just put all the airplanes on it's the runway. It's to show the satellites what we can have, what we can do. It's the, <laughs> it's, uh, they're, they're Ezekiel, they're pushing what's them out your there. name? <laughs> Ezekiel. Just a big flex. Yes, sure you, that's Ezekiel. All it is. That's yeah. Like, to uh, show the lobbyists what they're lobbying for so the Air Force can get a new dollars. shiny bit of airplanes. So we don't do this in the Navy because we just spend all our stuff on ships. Yeah, you do. You drive your boat around with everything that's, on the deck. True. I don't that's drive true. any boats around. I've never that's why y'all stand around. as you come into port, right? All the dudes in the whites, they don't do that anymore? Uh, actually, a long history of tradition that goes back. Really dead boat. Well, well, that's history of tradition of you know showing the taxpayers what they got. <laughs> Uh, free diver says wags mentioned looking t for a voiceover talent a while ago how does one submit an audio sample wags so we actually got a really great guy doing that for us he's already submitted the audio uh which we have here today with us well, so so it's just a matter of um <laughs> having the team integrate that into the game but he's already nice. submitted those um uh, audio nice. files but awesome. uh thanks to the offer Oh, okay. Yeah, and you should have been quicker because the royalty checks are yeah. unbelievable. <laughs> like, <laughs> Porsche. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, That's awesome. Um, all right. Thank you for the, uh, uh huh. Thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> let's see. David says, Hey, Wags, any chance we can get the super sexy Navy plane in DCS? You know, the one with the big rotating uh, <laughs> disc on it and the props. <laughs> Ladies love it. Asking for a friend. Oh, geez. It's not me. It's not me. I'm just... <laughs> Maybe someday. 
Yeah. Wombat's like, thanks, bro. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, bro. Don't put your name. They'll know it's from, you. Don't from what up. I'm hearing, it's confirmed. That's. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, it's a hundred percent. If we were to do something like that, it would probably be more of a AWAX control module, where there was an E2 or an E3. Oh, the backseater. <laughs> so pretty much, yeah, you know, like a backseat station. Perfect, Wags. I love it. Uh, <laughs> No one stung a bit, Wags. I have no idea. <laughs> Sorry, man. Sorry. Uh, I love nobody it. Nobody wants to fly, but everybody wants to say it, the but the tickets aren't exactly uh, bought for your trip yet. So. Yeah, I guess I saw that <laughs> trip, didn't I? <laughs> Andrew says, happy to catch you all live again. Thanks for the awesome content, as always. Rich is my hero. Just says, thanks, man. Thank you. Bailey mm -hmm. says, nothing better than a bunch of armchair quarterbacks in the comments who've never been in that situation. I haven't seen anybody in the comments. Oh, probably talking uh, he's about just what talking, I was talking yeah. about. Yeah. <clears throat> Gotcha. True. Valid. And uh, Nathaniel Rose, two questions for Wags. Will okay. we be getting texture templates for the new B1, B2, B52, and S3? Also, as an A2nd Airborne veteran, is there an update to paratroopers? So, for the skins, probably not anytime soon. Um, I'm not sure how much I can go into it, but we've been having more and more of a case of essentially some folks pilfering our work. I'll leave it at that. Uh, as for the uh, paratroopers, actually, it's more tied to the upcoming infantry we're doing. And actually, we have a newsletter coming next week that will be talking a little bit about the uh, new infantry. Cool. Thank you for that. Uh, Bailey says, referring to the procedure when I was at AS, the FO would fly and talk while the captain was the event manager running checklist ops. So this person was at Alaska and says mm -hmm. that that's might be the fo so good information okay. there and then will wheatley <laughs> wheaton oh wheatley oh, we'll wait uh something something wombat tic tac oh boy perfect perfect okay <laughs> moving on to our next one before wombat gets mad at me i'm not uh, are you still mad at me for that i don't know i can't remember there's a list okay. of things I'm mad because you keep putting my face on my face. Yep, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Are you mad one that click? Yeah. <laughs> I, fixed it. I fixed it. Yeah. I fixed it. I fixed it. Sometimes in the center. So on uh, January 4th, the B-1B bomber crashed as it was attempting to land at Ellsworth uh, Air Force Base in South Dakota. Very cold place. Incident occurred during poor weather in below freezing temperatures with dense fog. Maybe ice fog. According to local weather reports, radio traffic from local first reporters says an active fire and an explosion. Uh, it crashed at 5.50 p.m., so it's dark, probably. And air base is closed. They said the crew was uh, treated at a local hospital for non-life-threatening injuries. The 28th bomb wing said in a 5JN statement, the other three crew members were treated and released. Um, it's typically two pilots and two wizzos, all with ejection seats. And that is all the information they had. So ice fog sounds very not yeah, nice. Possibly. Yeah. No, no, that's really bad. Yeah. I so I, I, uh, I mean, we're glad that they did well. It sounds like it was some kind of in the, in the landing environment kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's interesting because the what I mean, I don't, the one picture I've seen, the airplane is. I mean, reason it's burned up, but it's reasonably intact. So I, yeah, it wasn't like a, right. Yeah. It's not like crumpled into you know dust. It's well, it like the like landing one. phase. Yeah, it looks like it right. happened like in the landing phase. So right. Um, and and what I wanted to bring up because the first thing that came to mind was this, uh, back in uh 2018. You guys heard this story about the distinguished flying cross for heroic response to fire ejection seat failure? No. Yeah, the one guy on the right there, he was in my pit class. Really? Yeah. Did he tell you the story? Uh, no, uh, he was, uh, he went to the B1 after, so this happened after I, I met him. Good dude. Oh, yeah, okay. Good well, dude. really good dude. So, Still is a good uh, dude. I know, that's what I'm saying. So back in uh, 2018, <laughs> this crew was uh, awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross for the bravery for something I, I don't know if when I could call it similar, but an emergency that required an ejection. However, uh, what happened was when they they had some kind of in-flight fire or emergency that's like, we've reached the point of the checklist where we have to eject. And they reached the checklist, and I guess the seats aren't sequenced, so it's everybody pulls. 
And the first guy really? did, the seat didn't fire. And so once that happened, it didn't function. And the aircraft commander said, all right, stop. Let's figure this out. And they flew it around. And they said it failed because there was one particular part that had gotten crimped. Uh, Goldfein said the chief of staff back then. Pull the handles, signal to ejection, sequence didn't flow. So what happened next? Uh, so it may be, that may have stopped the sequence too. So it may have been sequence seats and it may have when it, you know, did his, nobody else's fire. So they had to do it manually. But um, basically they said they, he remained in the arm seat for 20 minutes as they fought the plane and landed safely at Midland. If they had decided to eject, he would not have survived. And that aircraft commander made the decision with the concurrence of the crew and they lived to tell about it. So they got a DFC and that's kind of the, I mean, one of the more recent instances I know of, of B1 guys, cause you don't hear about them much. I mean, they've had mm -hmm. maintenance troubles and stuff in general. A lot of them just don't fly very much, but um, I just thought it was an interesting side to that original article, but uh, we're very thankful that all four managed to get out and, uh, what do you guys think? Well, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I mean that both think, stories are crazy. I'm glad everybody survived, but right, I didn't know there was yeah. four people on that plane. God. Yeah, uh, when I was at Pitt, actually, some of the instructors were uh, B1 guys when it was first coming online, and I remember them telling us stories about it. Like it, originally, not every crew member had a seat in that thing. Uh, they had some crashes early on where everybody but the guy without the seat got out kind of thing and they've they since i don't think anybody i think they've removed that crew member from the airplane uh nowadays but that's a horrible design yeah how oh, i mean right um i mean the the thumbnail history of that airplane right they developed it, it was gonna be mach 2 and then they shelved it for a while reagan brought it back so i mean it's it's had a bit of a it's had a bit of a, a storied history and there's only like what 45 left it said mover so yeah, there aren't, much, there, aren't, there aren't many. I don't know what I had. Up cool there. airplane. I, I think it's a, I think it's a sick looking airplane. It is cool. Yeah, I had one fly cool. right in front of me in Afghanistan with full burner. <laughs> purpose or did they just not know? Uh, I don't think they knew. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Um, it got my it got my attention. But the good yeah. news is the giant rotating radar dish in our plane also had didn't pick them up. So it was a win-win really across the board. Well, if you had somebody from DCS in the back simulating the <laughs> guy controlling. True. We maybe. need to train those guys. We need to train them. So Man, I was, in the, I was in the cast stack with a B1. I can't remember Afghanistan or Iraq, but it's, it's such a cool looking airplane. Oh, yeah. It's super cool. Well, we isn't, already, we have a, isn't already scheduled to be sunsetted, though, in like the next what, five or yes, six years? Yes, and then they didn't. Yeah. Oh, they, they, didn't. Oh, they canceled it. Yeah, so uh, I didn't hear that. Okay, they they I don't know about the cancel. They've delayed. They have B20, not. B twenty one supposed to replace it, right? Yeah, it was my understanding. Uh, yeah, I think wow. that's still the plan. But like Mover said, I think they keep moving the goal push to the goal post. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've heard I've heard stories about funding flying hours where they thought that certain B ones would be gone, and mm -hmm. then when it wasn't, they had to go steal flying hours from other places because they're like, well, we didn't budget for this two years ago, you know. Um, but Wags, what's more likely, a flyable B1 or a Wombat's plane? <laughs> Probably Wombat's. Don't, don't put, yeah, don't put <laughs> Wags on. Wags is already committed to the E2. I mean, it's there. It's done. Yeah, yeah. Breaking news. Uh, I'm not twice for B2. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have, you have other him. bombers, right? Yeah. Like, it's not like you need mm. another bomber in DCS. Like, anyway. Uh, Will Wheatley, Thanks, Will. Uh, we already did that one, sorry. Uh, this one, Wombat, I think I saw you at Albuquerque earlier last week. Sorry I didn't say me. hi, but I'll be buying a I signed book stamp. Wombat, do you have people follow come up to you now as a famous man? I do. Man? I do. do you really? Uh, yeah. I usually try to keep coins and stuff in my bags to give people if they... That's cool. A Luna yeah, coin? I, mean, I don't have one of those, but... There are new coins uh, available soon, by the way. Black ones. Did you guys see those? I sent you that picture, didn't I, Mover? You sent me the coffee cup thing. I'm uh, still no, waiting for mine I, in the mail. Just, I mean, yeah, keep waiting. Maybe if you <laughs> lived in a place with a mailbox and just... and not a gas tank on it, you would. Uh, I'll send you a picture of it on uh, on Messenger. The new, yeah. So, so yes, we are doing um, coins. 
I'm sorry, we're Our doing mugs. t-shirts and coffee mugs and all that. That'll be on the nice. website in the next couple of weeks. But nice. cool. Uh, this is I just sent you the the new coin uh, that I'm I technically in the have. Show. Sorry, I have right I'm, now. I'm yeah, no, I know. I'm trying to make money. Uh, no, uh, you made five dollars by that. So I'm trying. <laughs> no, to... no, Gonky made five dollars. Nineteen ninety eight. Somebody made five dollars, right. and it was not. Let's, me. Let me read the man's comment. <laughs> Nineteen eighty eight. Bravo seventeen and Fallon. All those words except Fallon, I didn't understand. Got to call B ones unload and full load of Mark eighty twos. Preceded by a low level visual recon of the impact area. Awesome. Oh, I bet. And then uh, from yeah. Twitch, B1 is slated to fly in the mid 2030s before it's retired. The B2 and B1 are supposed to eventually be fully replaced by the B21. So we got a little bit of a, a ways. Gonky will be retired. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sooner than later, probably. Yeah, at the rate we're going. <laughs> Uh, all right, moving on because we've got a lot to uh, talk about. Did you get on the topic of what Wags was just saying? Um, <laughs> There was a mishap in Japan, and people ask us why we didn't cover this last week because it didn't exist. Right, uh, it's it's fairly new and unfortunate, and there was, um, there was a fatality. So, on, oh, there was actually yeah, like four in the uh, four of them. Coast Guard really, yeah. four out of five. Oh, that's right in the uh, the, in the Coast the Guard. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So basically, what happened was uh, Japan Airlines A three fifty was cleared to land, and we'll talk about the comms here in a second. And they landed on on the runway and impacted a Coast Guard uh, Dash Eight, and uh, miraculously, miraculously, no one was killed or severely injured in the airliner. Uh, unfortunately, the Dash Eight uh, lost. I, I want to say four out of five. Yeah, that sounds right. Uh, of the crew so basically it says according to the atc so now they're kind of digging into the atc we're not going to really speculate uh, too much but i wanted to talk about what they've already released uh it was cleared to land on three four right and the coast guard aircraft was taxied to holding point charlie five which is uh a place where they could await permission to enter the active runway so the transcript basically says the uh a350 checked in good evening three four right continue approach three four right then they gave him cleared to land they read it back the coast guard plane checked in and said you're number one taxi to point charlie five so basically they were doing an intersection departure they were told they were number one which meant they're first but they got to wait probably for the the uh, japan airlines flight to land taxi clear and all that stuff it, he read it back correctly Taxi to holding point Charlie 5, JA722 Alpha. We're number one. Thank you. But then it says this actually contradicts the Coast Guard's plane captain. I'm not, I think that is probably their vernacular for pilot in command, maybe the left seater. The only one of the six crew, so five of six, not four or five, uh, who told the investigators he had been given permission to enter the runway, which the Japan airliner, Japan Airlines airliner was approaching. Uh, a series of lights at the relevant holding point may not have been working, but they point out there's other visual cues like runway markings and such that would show they needed to stop short. So um, a passenger says it felt like a boom and we hit something, jerked upward the moment of landing, saw sparks, uh, several fired the engine. That carbon fiber just, just you know, I mean, it burned to the ground. Uh, you can see that here. Uh, just incredible. But... Um, you know, this this sounds like the thing they always, you know, they always talk about as far as in, in training, you know, somebody enters the runway and you can't go around. It's just I mean, there's literally nothing, nothing you can do. And from the Coast Guard side, this is the reason why we read back and we confirm, especially as a crew, when you're entering an active runway, um, you know, that you're cleared to take off and all that stuff. Uh, what do you guys think? It sounds like it's a communication error, perhaps within their own aircraft well it's it's one of the greatest threats right now the faa in, in at least our country has identified because we're also training this right now um is runway incursions it's the biggest thing going on in the industry so um which i know you guys have talked about some of them but it's it's bad man it really is and it and it goes to that complacency and i'm not saying there was that in this case you know i mean there's a lot of swiss cheese model that lines up but it's that complacency like you talked about earlier mover where you go your whole career and you taxi out to the runway take off everything works fine you land and you go home and that's it's it's tough that's why you just have to 
I don't know, you got to fight it, you know? And I mean, I think there was other external factors that'll come out on this, you know, that caused it. Um, but it's, yeah, it sucks. It really does. Yeah. The it's whole grateful that it wasn't worse because it could have been way worse. Oh, well, the fact that everybody got off that 350 shocks you, me. I, I, that's the discipline of the, the Japanese I, passengers. I agree. I was going to, I mean, I hate to get into a cultural thing. I don't think if this happens in the States, that everybody well, did it happen? Remember Chicago? You had people grabbing bags and fighting each other and taking selfies and video and stuff. You know, I'm yeah, talking about the Chicago. This is in the States. I don't think this. I think you lose people in that 350 just because people. Yes, I agree. Self-centered. Yeah, anyway, Gonky, you were well, about to say something. I apologize. I mean, I, you know, being primarily a military pilot, like every time in the airliner, I, I go into a busy airport. I don't know exactly. I've never flown in japan but like that whole phase of just getting in and out of that terminal area is in my mind like for me especially is the highest threat because you know there's other airplanes it's like the, the closest proximity you're going to be to a lot of different airplanes and you know something sometimes like one radio call you might get mixed up with another one or you thought you know you always like i i thought that's what i heard but that's did i really hear that because you know maybe the guys i not speculate but you know sometimes you hear what you want to hear um, sure. and that can, you know, you can make those mistakes and be okay if it's just kind of you out there and, you know, the wild blue yonder, but when you're in a really busy environment, like a, like an airport, that's when things can happen. And there's, there's levels of safety, but this isn't, unfortunately, it's not the first time this happened in the late eighties. They had, I think the U S air seven, three land on the jet stream. Right. Uh, and those, unfortunately, uh, you know, fatalities on both, <clears throat> both airplanes. Tenerife. I mean, Ten Tenerife was takeoff, but same thing, right? A runway yeah. incursion, and even uh, Wombat, right? An LSO school. One of the worst accidents we ever had was uh, the Prowler trapping at night when the S3 was still in the wires. And you got, I mean, how yeah. many LSOs are on the platform? You've got everybody on the flight on deck. Flight deck, the, the, the air bosses. There's, yeah. there's like a, like a dozen layers of safety, right? But it's yeah. uh, anytime you're coming into that terminal environment where airplanes are landing and taking off it's like you gotta be you well, the, really gotta be keyed up the, what two years ago air canada almost landed on the taxiway full of airplanes coming yep. into san francisco yeah mm -hmm. i mean it it is just you're a heartbeat away you're a heartbeat yep. away from a horrible day where i can't tell air you just, times just gets broken you do it i'm sure you guys do it whether you do it audibly or not like i mean just yesterday two days ago when i came into land in atlanta you know it's beautiful clear day and one flight early morning and i look out i'm like you know i'm flying it's it's 200 feet above the ground i'm like okay everything's configured the lights <laughs> yeah. are all set and the runway is clear like it's like the final check because it's it's yeah. yeah it's just there's so much stuff going on that you're like but luckily we do that. I mean, Wombat, how many times as a semi P have you thrown like a random fire truck on the runway, you know, as they're in close? I can neither I mean, confirm nor deny. They, they <laughs> I mean, they, I ask that because they do that to us all they the do time. do that to where, me. You know, you, you're, you're like, oh, it's a bus random fire nuns, truck right? going by. Yeah. yeah. Bus full of it's nuns. like, bus full of nuns, go around. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it's something that, you know, you always have to be vigilant and I'm not saying anything about this crew. No. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what happened in the, the A350 cockpit and what their awareness was and whether there was even a, a, a minuscule chance of avoiding this. My gut tells me that this is just one of those things that the air chain needed to be stopped when they, to keep that dash eight off the runway. Correct. Like once they were on the runway, this may have been too far gone, but. Wags, well, uh, have you, have you been to this airport? I have not. No. Okay. But, but I guess, you know, from a point of ignorance, I guess the one question I have is, you know, outside of the comm, would you always do a visual check of what's on final before taking the active? Sure. Yeah. But the lights at night, you would, at I would night. think you would see it. Yeah. You do. Yeah. But the lights, man, they all kind of blend in sometimes. Ah, uh, okay. They do. And they it's were, really they were doing an intersection departure too. So they're not, it's not like they're holding short at the numbers. Okay. And they see this big plane that's about to touch down in the first 1,500 feet or 1,000 feet. Mm -hmm. They are 3,000 feet or whatever it is down the runway. And those oh, guys are actually landing behind them and then rolling into them. Like it's, I understand. there's a whole, from what I understand, just basically, it, I, mean, I don't think they were at the end of the runway. 
And I mean, you can only you can in, a, in any transport airplane, you can really only see out the front, man. So like if if they had taken the runway, just waiting to take off intersection mm-hmm. takeoff, they'd never saw. You know. I see. So it's. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. <clears throat> All right. I don't know what the answer uh, is other than like maybe have some sort of uh, you know T cast. Right? It's like well, they do. I mean, yeah, a, a bigger air. I mean, maybe they haven't paid for it at your airline, but at uh, no, at, we... the, <laughs> at the bigger airports, wow. dude, they're tracking 50 bucks you from a month. Gate. Yeah. Go, hey, Wombat, you missed it, dude. You missed Gonky's regular re- uh, uh, revelation <laughs> that they don't use CPDLC, and he didn't even know what it was. I said, I said, Gonky, we were talking about autonomous stuff. And I said, hey, Gonky, they could just use CPDLC like they do now. He's like, what? 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 I said, how do you get your clearance? He goes, tested traffic. Gonky, <laughs> yeah. Request clearance. Any traffic in the area, please advise. Like, they, they don't. IFR to Billville. IFR, yeah. <laughs> hey, Gonky, have you looked at a new Camaro and all the technology they have? <laughs> yeah. your, your I couldn't handle it. Couldn't handle it. Have you ever heard of a GPS? It'd blow your mind. It would blow your mind. Uh, all right. So, uh, viewer says apparently the runway threshold lights were not operational in that. I'd section. heard that oh. as well. Oh, wow. But it's... but to your to the point of the technology, like there's all kinds of runway light. Like you go to the bigger airports yeah. and they change colors, yeah. they flash red to tell you yeah. not to go. Like there's all kinds yep. of technology oh, yeah. now yep. um to keep you from doing stuff like that. But and I'm sure Japan's got it. Um yeah. very sad. I'm sure they do. It yep. Is, it's uh, sad. And on the other hand, like I said, it's amazing. It's a miracle yeah. that more people weren't lost. You know, the fact that anybody walked away from the Coast Guard plane is insane. I mean, yeah, I didn't know that. I thought everybody, yeah. I, didn't so know that I thought everybody was going. Yeah. John says, breaking news you get free stuff if you stock wombat. <laughs> stock, stock wombat, stock yeah. probably. Yeah. Or stock. Either way, it's fine. It's, yeah. Stock him. <laughs> just, I just Moving on. Things. Oh boy. Bags. Here we go. Roll Game the tape. Dynamics 2024. I'm going to have to mute it because oh, you guys got some really awesome music that i think is gonna get all of us demonetized so but we're gonna do a breakdown of the trailer and wags is gonna tell us as we go and i'll stop it so if you want to go watch this go watch it on your own and report back okay Okay. so you you play it mover and you can pause at a point if you have any questions or tell you what you you stop you tell me stop tape and i'll I'll stop it if if I don't if I don't go. Uh, okay. Wombat, have you seen this? No. Oh, oh here we go. Wombat this. reaction. <laughs> That's a ship. That is boat. a big old boat. <laughs> Hi, Nick from Eagle Dynamics. And welcome to 2024 and beyond. And beyond. So pause. Be one. So who who can name that airfield? Oh man. Al-Assad. Negative. No. The B-1 flyer. Uh, I don't Cutter. know, man. How you need. Negative, negative. Go Is it Atlanta? East. Does it look like it's Atlanta? <laughs> <laughs> it's Hartsfield. It's Hartsfield. <laughs> I zone out a lot. Is that bad? It looks similar. We also well, have AWACS there, so they wouldn't be going anywhere non-Gucci. He's got one big hanger in the middle of the field, Mover. Like old school uh, style. That is... Grim Lake. Is it, is it Baghdad? No. Nah. Bagram. Is it Bagram? Bagram. Bagram? Bagram. Oh. Is it coming oh. back to you? <laughs> no, I never went to Bagram, but. Oh, yeah, I can't uh, remember. I know you obviously were in uh, Iraq. Yeah, Iraq I'm an Iraqi Iraq. guy, but yeah. Bagram confirmed. Got it. Yep. Next. That's awesome. That is awesome. E barrel like that. This coming year, we'll see. Pause. Uh-oh. Vortex ring state. So two new things, obviously the uh, CH-47 Foxtrot. And we nice. showed it last year, but it was actually a model of the Italian version of the Chinook. Uh, since that original video, we've actually now created the U.S. version for mid-2000s. Wow. And um, a, a lot of work on that right now, particularly the avionics, the flight model and such. And then in terms of the Abrams, that's actually a brand new model. That's I believe it's the SEP three, if I remember right. Which Can is I at drive an all it? new level. We hope someday, yeah. 
you know, eventually. Oh, tank um, wars with Gonky, dude. That'd we'll be BFM fun. those things. Yeah, be definitely <laughs> an opportunity down the road to expand, you know, DCS level aircraft to DCS level ground units. It's just a matter of time at this point. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But, but a big part of that, it's not just the ground vehicles. There's also the damage modeling, of course. There's the AI. But I think just as importantly, there's also the terrain. Because if you're going to do, say, a Abrams or a T-whatever rushing tank simulator, you also need to have the terrain at that kind of level of detail that supports it. You know, down to gullies and, you know, people have really no kidding, defilade positions and so on. So I think it's coming. It's just, it's not just building a tank. There's other elements that have to come along with it to make it happen. Dude, I just, I sit here and I look at this and I'm like, we're like a breath away from I can't tell if this is real or not. Yeah. Like you're exactly. you're just so close. I yeah, mean in there. There's the some pixel. there's some angles and, and scenes from this. I'm like, man, that that's real. That looks real. Well, and then you're gonna have all the well, this is legit Ukraine footage, and it's like, no, nah, it's DCS, bro. <laughs> it's, yeah. Uh, and we got some more graphic enhancements coming this year, uh, particularly the uh, the Vulcan API, and that's gonna allow us to do some really cool additional graphic things. Um uh, particularly like using RTX cards to uh, take advantage of uh, uh, dyna more dynamic shadows and that sort of thing. So it'll look even more realistic by the end of the year. Gonky, this is why we're never going to fly real fighters. We're just going to do this for the rest of our lives. Much. It's like that commercial with the cable guy. Anyway, sorry, continue. Bugs and functionality coming to DCS. Dude, how cool is that? I'm sorry, I had to stop it. This looks badass. Yeah. And these dudes are walking like real people. Is that new? Yeah. Is that how they walk now? It is now, but one of the big things we're working on again for this year is a whole new infantry uh, models, animation, and AI, um, because that's certainly a big growth area we need to further improve upon. And particularly when you have a place like Afghanistan, where it's much more coin oriented, where you're going against uh, leg units, you know, having those infantry units being much more uh, carefully modeled than what we have right now is going to be very important. So, you think one day it'll be we can play as the dude, the little yeah. army man? Yeah. Wow. Oh, call yeah, I'm not going to say when, but it is certainly the, the, one of the long-term goals. Whether you're going to be able to redo your career one day in DCS. <laughs> I will, it, it will and it'll wind up the exact same. Probably. <laughs> Dang it. It'll, somehow <laughs> it's just going to end up exactly the same virtually <laughs> as it did real life. Okay, where's that? That is the Kola Peninsula map. So that's oh. going to be everywhere from uh, on the west side, Norway, uh, to like Bodo, side? all wow. the way out east, uh, past like um, um, Murmansk in that area, and then down south, you know, through most of Finland and Sweden. So it's going to be a, a rather large map, and that's actually being done by a company called Orbex who's been doing oh, yeah. really high quality maps and other mm -hmm. platforms for quite a while. So after years of working with them, they finally uh, agreed to start developing for DCS. And that's going to be their first map coming uh, later this year. Will it include the Swedish bikini team? I will <laughs> check on that. I'm a buyer. I'm just saying. DCS truly is so, a community. That's also Afghanistan. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the success story entirely driven by your passion. That's a LA7 coming by one of our third parties this year. And that, of course, is the Wait, uh, Gonky, what is it? Oh, oh, I was going to get Gonky to be Sorry idea for us. Yeah, I, that, like that looks, I mean, if you like showed me that, like, hey, here's a color picture from World War II. Like, man, <laughs> like, this looks real. Three Corsairs next to each other. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Vision. That's awesome. We share your. Uh, That's inside of the uh, F, uh, F4E Phantom 2 coming from Heepler, also for this year. It's actually in a uh, pre order right now. Conky's yeah. got his pre order in. Cool. Your ambitions and hopes for the future of digital combat simulation. Strike Eagle over, I think that's probably the Zagros Mountains in Iraq. Jeez Louise, look at all that even I'm like, I, this is a like, I've I didn't even realize wags that even I thought these were just generic <laughs> ground pictures and whatnot. It I didn't really uh, think that the detail is uh is amazing. 
Thanks, man. Thanks. You probably noticed like even the like the mountains, there's a whole new level of geometry we're putting into these maps now. So flying over the mountains, I, I think it's gonna be a even a much better experience than it used to be. And embrace the tough challenges ahead. Oh, saw an E2 back there. <laughs> Let's back that up. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Love that react. There no. it is. <laughs> oh, there it is. It, there that it looks is. like a C2. No, is that a C2? You can see the big dome. You even have the little white nose art thing on the end of it. Yeah, there you go. I wonder why it's a triangle, though, instead of a... It's normally anyway. a plus, isn't it? Illuminati yeah. confirmed. Yeah, yeah I need yeah. to get uh, uh, need Wombat's to name on the side. That's right. That'd, be, That'd yeah. be awesome. I'll talk to the artist. <laughs> Thank you. Chinook. All of them are sort of unwavering. That like was that's scary it. to fly even there. Yeah. So that's uh, Cole again with a uh, Norwegian uh, paint scheme on the Viper. Wow. Nice. And Ooh. What's that? that? Oh, boy. I think that's the Hellcat. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh, uh, Hellcat there, no, or it might be the LA7. So, no. Oh, so no, it's really? LA7. It's the LA7 does in yeah. Russian. Yeah. So yeah, very it's... much not American. Will make <laughs> there you go it's australian uh cole again but is that an australian oh, hornet oh no finish i believe okay i thought that was a kangaroo no, like how dirty it is on the bottom it's so accurate that is accurate hydraulics just spewed on the bottom of it just... <laughs> all right i'm gonna mute it because now we're in the copyright zone okay so pause but... here so one of the big things uh, this year moving forward is expanding out the Pacific Theater of Operations focused on the summer of 1944, uh, where we're adding the uh, World War II version of the Marianas map. Uh, so that way you can do the whole Marianas um, uh, battle, the land battle for Saipan and Tinian and so on, Saipan, as well as the, uh, the big naval engagement, of course, off to the west. So I believe this is an Essex carrier. Yeah, that's amazing. With some uh, Corsairs on the deck. Wow. Which is so you can actually, land? And I, oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Do you hey, have look, it's got enough wires paddle? for Gonky. <laughs> 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 is there a barricade at the end, too, just in case? I mean, you yeah. know. Okay, is there 12, paddles? Okay, 12 wire. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay, 12. <laughs> Will you have uh, 1944 paddles? I don't know. That's a good I question. Know. With the light suit when they started doing nighttime, that was really. Yeah, cool. I need the flags. And the yeah. flags. That's right. Yeah, that's, amazing. that's a good question. Ooh, that's World War II. Actually, it's that that island Mog is actually in the current map as well. Uh, Japanese cruisers. That is the Hellcat. So we first teased this last year. And this should be uh, Hellcat will be out in 2024. Dude, I think it's the Dash it, Three yeah. version, if I remember right. Hellcat versus Hornet. <laughs> Some buffs. Tomcats. Oh, that, Tomcats yeah, down cool. low over the Iraq map. Go with your VID, Gaki. Forget, dude. I say something. It's a surface to air missile. Right? <laughs> it's a six. Is that a six? It's a six, a gainful. And that's in the Cola map again. What was that in Flight of the Intruder, right? Was that an SA6? No. No, they were twos. Twos Probably and twos. No, it, what, it, no, it was the portable one, the one that was driving around. That was the. Are you, uh, are you thinking behind enemy lines? No, I thought there was one at the end where he got that's shot a, down. And that's he, a, uh, uh, was a, wasn't oh, I think it was a gun system. Yeah, it's oh, the SU 23. Yeah. 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 Ah, so, uh, so awesome. I've seen that. Corsairs over uh, Marianas World War II. Dude, oh, that's awesome. this is so, so cool. That is, go back. Yes. Speak of the devil. There you go. Mm. That's the uh -oh. this north one? end of Saipan. Um, that's so really during the cool. Battle of Saipan, there were P 47s uh, deployed B17s. there. I'm not sure about the B 17s were ever uh, deployed to Saipan. Okay. Uh, but uh, the 47s were, but I believe at that point it's still the Razorbacks and not the uh, the Ds that we have in the game. Can we simulate? Did you ever fly over game? that, Gonky? Mm -hmm. You never. I got to fly all around that. It was awesome, man. Just oh, to I see bet. the old runways and the grass, and I mean, 
I bet. And how Would far the, out in uh, the middle of nowhere you were. I was like, Whoa. We hear the uh, Air Force is bringing back North Airfield on Guam. I thought yeah. I read that somewhere. Yeah. 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 They want, yeah, I guess, more deployable bases mm-hmm. to make uh, targeting of Guam that much more difficult. Can Wombat fly this in his Flight of the Intruder remake? Hopefully. I'll, I'll fly it. So this is I'll done by Heepler. Uh, not could by be us. My so they're doing an AI version first. And then, of course, um, you know, hopefully we'll have a player version as well down the road. Nice. Well, that's a great. Awesome. great. That plane is so cool. That is, yeah. Ooh, can you fly this? That is the Corsair. That is coming from another third party. So oh that's actually God. a Portuguese skin on that one. It's All such a that, cool plane, but, no, but it looks too. so weird. Yeah. Isn't it? Look, it's the Lou Vipers. Yeah. I think that's. that's really really being that a guard, Bubba. Might be Afghanistan again. Oh, look at this guy. Yeah, th- this is cool because the guy. I mean, I can tell he's uh, not real, but it's a. Uh, it's it's getting close. You're not real in his world, Gonky. Yeah. <laughs> is this thing? Can I ride on the boat? We'll build one for you, Mover. <laughs> I don't build want Mover to. canoe. Yeah. Oh no, Nazis are winning. <laughs> There's our Hellcat. That's so awesome. Hellcats. Hellcats. Yeah, we need yeah. one of those. Let's buy those. Are they cheap? <laughs> Dude, look. No. So yeah. the nice thing with the Hellcat is our uh, CEO, Nick Gray, has a lot of flight time in those. So in real life? Uh, yep. So cool. the nice thing is we basically have a built-in SME on this one as well. Yeah. The and of course, all the good. documentation and uh, everything we'd ever need to do a super detailed and accurate Hellcat. So That's is the awesome. Zero flyable? Uh, definitely AI. Um, as for flyable, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> so I could splash the zeros like final countdown style. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm fully expecting lots of people to do Tomcats versus zeros. Hell yeah. That's awesome. Is this DCS or old footage from the that WWE? is DCS, but, uh, our videographer, uh, obviously put a filter on it to make it more uh, vintage looking. That's awesome. your, That's I love the Phantom. Your tank. Oh. The new M1. Tomcat. Tomcat. Tomcat over probably Afghanistan yes. again. A6. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure why Harms would be on the A6. Though. <laughs> Look, his, his, his visor Iron is hand. even smudged. <laughs> Who what? Yeah, his visor was even smudged. Was it? Yeah, look. His visor's all smudged. Oh, yeah. Um, I like the clean. helmet all scratched up. I mean, that is yeah. such a cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's not Air Force, though. You get brand new helmets if you get scratched. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, Navy thing. Wait, are these? Are that's, still- the, uh, that's the new buff um, model we put in last year. Can you fly it? Not fly it, no. Yeah, I'd love to do, you know, B1, B52, what, you know, what have you. But, you know, just the right. sensor, weapons, countermeasure systems. Right. We can't touch that stuff. And you can't really do an aircraft like that in DCS with that those references. Look at that thing. Whoa. SA-10. What you got there? Double digit Sam Skonky. We're Not also obsolete and virtual. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Ooh. Yeah, the LA seven again. Oh, wait. Um, Dude, are, are you are you in the pillbox? I th- I think our video ag- editor uh, did some creative camera control and positioning. <laughs> oh, okay. Kind of make it look <laughs> like, like damn, that. dude. Yeah. That's all DCS. That is. Yeah. It looks like you're watching that World War II footage. Yeah. You know, that I'm you really happy with yeah. what he did there. It's yeah, probably it's my awesome. favorite scene in the entire video, actually. That's awesome. During Korea, the Navy kill ratio was. <laughs> it's the F4 site. Yeah, yeah. that's from uh, Top Gun. Oh, Mirage. Mirage. That's the F1. Yeah. That's crazy. Is that a pass? So, actually, go back there for a second. Which one? Uh, terrain going down the valley in the uh, Apache. A little forward. Where? Oh, way too far back. And oh, that's the Kiowa. I think maybe you 
start. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Play from there. There. Yep. Oh. There you go. So that's uh that is a rack map in the Zagros Mountains. But you get a better feel for the additional level of geometry detail uh yeah. within the mesh now. Is that Apache? Wow. It is. Wow. I am the greatest. <laughs> oh, Kiowa. There's Kiowa. Finally. Is that coming yep. out in 2024? Finally? I sincerely hope so. That's Lord. wild, man. My most wow. anticipated one. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Did you fly the Ranger wow. at all, Mover? The what? Do you ever fly a Ranger at all? I flew an OH 58. I, oh, did uh, you now? Uh, Harrison County Sheriff's Office is an OH 58. Ah, no kidding. Oh, I didn't know yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, it's awesome. Flogger. That's Flogger B23 coming from yeah. Raspa, one of our third parties. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is the D, right? OH 58 D? It is. Yeah. Yeah. The Got some hellfires on there, of course, mass mount site. A is more like just a 206, but this is also badass. Yeah. Oh, dude, that's such a good-looking helicopter. <laughs> it is. A-10? Wow. Oh, what are we so looking that's at? The, that's the inside of the Chinook. Jeez. Oh, okay. Gaki, is this PTSD? <laughs> That's uh, <laughs> yeah. no way they're gonna launch us. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Launch the weather, Rocky. That's uh -huh. right. <laughs> uh -oh. Yeah. Gonna... Wait a minute. Hur Hurricane Is this hunters fly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that will be flyable. Yeah. Gonky, there you go, man. We can do BFM with the, the Hercs. I'm good, man. I like I like just watching. <laughs> I'm an observer now. Some some who have seen you do it think that that's what you're doing. <laughs> so <laughs> so Ooh, it's a MRAP. MRAP? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's one of the new uh, ground. Can you drive it? Uh, probably through combined arms, but you know, again, in terms of like you know detailed uh, ground units, that would be uh, kind of a big next stage for DCS at a later point. Awesome. Yeah. Now we're keeping the ground units, you know, very basic in combined arms. Nice. Also nice. Like we're in the uh, what's real and what's not. I mean, at some point, Wags, uh, like people this are making cool movies. I, I mean, they're just going to use. Why would you need need real airplanes? Like at, at some point, it's going to uh, get so that real. That movie was called Called to Duty, and they did not do a very good job of using DCS. But, I can tell you. Yeah, oh, but yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like it's getting like better and better and better at some point like yeah you know, well that's makes good movies <laughs> yeah it's, it's kind of the issue too it's, it's not as bad as it was before but uh when things particularly kicked off early on uh in ukraine uh folks right. were putting up a lot of videos right and um people confusing those with uh the real thing right but so I mean, actually, like yeah but in like five years at the rate you guys are improving the simulation it's mm -hmm. i mean it, it yeah, cool. I mean, if you think Pretty about cool. it, like on that note, I mean, if Eagle Dynamics ever found like a series of naval aviation books that they wanted to make into a full blown movie, <laughs> a full -blown I mean, movie? you'd have to find the right thing, the right but, story. I, mean, I think it's, it's doable, you know, really. Yeah. Is, for sure. More but like I said before, with the Vulcan, hopefully, we can get the uh, ray tracing in. I think that's also going to add a kind of a next level element to the uh, realism of it. Yeah, that's awesome. Pretty good in the cockpit. Look like these two dudes are fighting. So are the boats fighting each other too? What is no, happening? No, they're trying they're to make jinking? themselves harder targets to hit. This is standard World War II a boat yeah. tactic. Standard every time Gonky tries to land. Well, that signal turning. Charlie, man. Signal right? Charlie. Well, that signal yeah, Charlie. You know no, no calm needed. Oh, there it no is. Yeah, needed. if you look at like the vintage uh, yeah. war footage in the Pacific, you know, all the ships are turning the entire time, so. uh, trying to, to give an easy target for a dive bomber or a torpedo bomber. It made it hard to land on it, so I could imagine. Wow. Yeah. Vipers. That's so That's cool. cool the flap, that. yeah. yeah. Mirage. Oh, man. Dude. Wow. Ah, oh, dang it, Wags. You make me want to go be a fighter pilot again. Like, <laughs> like an active yeah, one. Dude, if I had this as a kid. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Mm, I'd fail yeah. out of school. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, so now we got to go skip ahead to the previews. Yep. 
coming in 2024, which we're in. Iraq. It's nice. That's pretty cool, dude. I remember. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I don't remember yeah, being green. So, you cool. know, obviously, there's a lot of um, flat areas in Iraq, but particularly yeah. if you go off to the east and somewhat to the north, you know, lots of mountains, of course, too. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, there's the MRAPs, the new M1. And joining in full fidelity from the left. Da, da, da. Bum, bum, nice. Boom. nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's something uh, that's cool. folks have been asking for for a long time is a fourth gen uh, Red 4 aircraft. So we'll hope that will scratch the ditch for a lot of our customers. <laughs> Dude, that is amazing. awesome. That is amazing. Yeah. Well, obviously, I did not make the video. Our video editor, uh, Cato, uh, uh, Growling no. Sidewinder, did with what? a lot of editing help from Nick. You pretty much do everything as far as the world is concerned. So you would think, based on the comments, <laughs> you're solely responsible <laughs> for anything that goes wrong and nothing that goes right, right? Just so, everything goes wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so. You're the complaint department. <laughs> pretty much. Uh, no, actually, our, our community managers take the brunt of it, not me. Awesome. Oh, man. Uh, Amazing. Great work. Holy cow. Yeah, okay. They, they did a really good job with it. Well, that concludes. Uh, Gonky, you better start getting ready because now it's your turn. Um, but we've got some super chats while you want to get ready for your next. Uh, I just read comment. <laughs> you got you to gotta share your screen, though, sir. Are you going to do the super chats? Yeah, but you, you got to set up for the next thing. It doesn't just magically happen. I know you uh, professionalism on levels that people don't even <laughs> well, begin to understand. Is that a 1941 Lexington class carrier? I don't know if it's a 1941. I just know it's a Lexington class uh, carrier. Okay. Lawrence says, hi there. I'm a French police officer with a passion for military aviation. Longtime follower. Thank you for making me feel like a part of the team. Gonky, that was your team. He's from your channel, so... Uh, <laughs> sorry, Pete. Um, I can't. <laughs> that wasn't Pete. That was Lawrence, the French policeman. No, dude, I'm reading this one. Well, you're skipping over. Okay. Well, put it back. Put I can't. it back. It's too late. It's already gone. Sorry. What was it, man? I I I, I saw a blue car. He was he was saying yeah, blue Mustang. He was <laughs> saying that uh, he appreciated being part of the team. Anyway, oh, thanks, Rocky, tell us you fly for spirit without saying you fly for spirit. I don't fly for spirit. <laughs> So you can fly on spirit and feel okay now. Wags, before getting an Abram and all those things, are we going to get more tools for combined arm, like realistic radios to give our virtual JTAC some more tools to work with? Probably not right now, but we are looking at some means to definitely improve the ground operation aspects of the game. But that's something we're going to be talking about at a later point. So unfortunately, um, there's not a whole lot I can say on it right now. Copy. Classified. Mm. Tom says, Wags, if we're getting a Eurofighter oh. in the near future, is there a possibility of getting something like a Rafale or a Gripen? Also the AH-1 Cobra. Cobra, thanks for all that you guys do. So for Rafale and Gripen, I, unless some public information is someday released, um, that we can use? Probably not. Uh, there's just not nearly enough information for those two aircraft. Uh, for the Cobra, particularly for the Whiskey, that information is available now. So I think a uh, Super Cobra is in the cards someday later, but you know, not in work right now by any means. But it's possible someday now. Whereas a Rafale Gripen, say. again, it's just not possible at this point. Yeah, Gripen's been, Saab is a little bit close hold. So They are, yeah. I even reached out and right. there just wasn't the interest for that yep. at the moment. doesn't say anything's going to change, but yep. at the moment. Yeah, things change. You know, even like this time last year, I couldn't really find any good information to do, again, like the um, Super Cobra. But that's changed now. So it is a possibility in the future, at least. Mayur Mundaya. Hello, folks. Join late. Hello, W A O M B A T and Wombat. <laughs> Wombat. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Yeah. 
Are the old Eagle dynamics going to be uplifted with the new map tech? This maybe it means old Eagle dynamics. Like caucuses, maps. I guess. Yeah. Are they going to take all that stuff and do a refresh on all the older caucuses and knitter? Mm -hmm. and we, we may. Actually, we've been talking about it particularly more for the Nevada map at some point. But, you know, as always, it's, you know, where the resources come from. And right now, all the map resources are on Iraq, Afghanistan, and Marianas World War II. And the Swedish bikini team. And the Swedish bikini team. And the Swedish bikini team. <laughs> Smooth says, can you ask Wags, whatever happened to the P-40? And will it ever start being developed again? Uh, that was actually done by a third party that uh, went its separate ways. Oh, wow. It's a song. Uh, Toad decoys. Yep. Yeah, that's not good so, to do. So we have enough information to do a, a rough version of the ALE 50 for the Viper. And it is actually on our roadmap, um, but it'll be after early access. And, and even then, it's going to have to be a watered down system because as Mover just alluded to, it's a rather sensitive system that we have to be very careful about. Oh, the jail. Mm. Oh, yeah. How many Gs oh, yeah. did dive bombers pull in World War II? I, I didn't know, know there would be a test today. I yeah. didn't either. I'm, yeah, I don't know. Six <laughs> to be nine. honest. Six point nine. <laughs> Five or six or seven. <laughs> Will says, passing the torch is Thanks, hard, Will. you guys. Nobody can take away what you did. You have the life experience. The youngsters don't. Chin up. It'll be okay. Yeah, gonky. Chin up, dude. I'm trying, man. Yeah. Uh, can Wags do Airwolf? Yeah, Wags. Can you do <laughs> Airwolf? Like too classified. Yeah, <laughs> for sure you'll go to jail. You'll have There's no chance. Archangel right after you. Wombat, if you three build a DCS campaign, we'll buy it and fly it. I'm not sure it'd be a successful campaign, but it might be fun. <laughs> what you could do is I could ourselves. put you in touch with some of the campaign builders. Uh, you guys could lend your voices to some of the parts. I'm in. If you're interested. I'm in. Sure. Well, Wombat said he's in. Without. Wombat's already in, I know. Yeah. yeah, I love doing that stuff. I'll support you all that, whatever. Yeah, we got you know, this. I'm always game. I'll give it, I'll give it. You Donkey wasn't time. very good at talking on the radio real time. I don't know if he's going to be that good as a voiceover. <laughs> Whenever Mover mentions call to duty, the Simpsons meme stop, it's already dead, comes to mind. And they, dude, he got a hundred rupees. Maybe? Uh, I, I don't know what that is. I don't know. Dave Hansen, why don't you have a seat over there? Thanks, Dave. Reading makes me sleepy. Need to do Gonky's books to be made in the movies. <laughs> oh man, gosh, lots of coloring book jokes lately, huh? Yeah. Oh, when is the uh, the next one coming out? I mean, what are you up to? Thirty six uh, by now? No, man. The next one, uh, hopefully this week. My guy had a bit of a family emergency, so we had a little little delay. So, kind of family in, emergency. It's in the works. I'm making a making a fighter jet puzzle too. No big deal, but. <laughs> no big deal no big deal nothing like wombat that's for sure I'm just just a little guy but uh yeah okay all right you surviving right. the storm mover as far as i know uh yeah, great show guys nice to see you live from the uk uh gonky being a church guy how did you feel if you had to shoot to kill an act of service it's a tough one wow well i did have to um well, yeah I mean, and i just i don't know i guess to kill, right you don't shoot the wound yeah, you shoot to neutralize. <laughs> um, Eliminate. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, in combat, you're. Uh, I don't have tons and tons of combat time, but the experience I have is, uh, your your brothers and sisters are asking for your help, and I guess in that moment you don't have any political views. You're not thinking about anything other than, hey, holy cow, I have the power as a twenty something year old kid in this amazing machine to make their problem go away and uh you know you just think about that and not messing up and that's you know I, how i felt uh religiously was packed up uh you know when i signed on the dotted line to you know serve my country so uh, that might not be the best answer or an answer that uh everyone will accept but that's something you know you and god have to figure out yeah, I think that's pretty well put. I, I, I mean, if you're anything like anybody else, Conky, I think you deal with it more post thinking yeah. about it. Oh, yeah. Of course. Of course. In the moment, 100%. there's no. 100%. I think you're dead. 
right? Isn't that the yeah? For... Uh, on a lighter note, uh, breaking news: I've got a picture of Gonky's office. <laughs> <laughs> that is one hundred percent my desk. <laughs> this is you not know made up. This was true. This is true facts. This is what little... Gonky arrived to this weekend. You that know, his new job is my boss. Finally arrived. Movie? Wait a minute, what was that movie Will Smith was in where like uh, he achieves his dream? You know, he's working the stockbroker. Uh, anyways, and that movie's like, I figured out if I didn't take a lunch, I could get a lot more work done. Well, if I don't have to go to the bathroom, um, I, dude, I can just work nonstop. Clearly, coloring books was my number one task of the day there. But uh, yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> now, that is... now that that is my, uh, if you come into my office to chat, that is your seat. So that's where you can stay that's as where long I as you sit. like. That's where Mover sits these days. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Gotta love the Air Force. <laughs> With the Afghanistan and Iraq map, are there any plans for the AH-1Z or tilt rotor? With the F-4 coming, any plans of a detailed Vietnam? So for the Zulu, no plans right now. That's certainly an aircraft we have no uh, information for that we could use for it. For the tilt rotor, I assume he's talking about the Osprey. Uh, we're not doing it, but I'll leave it at that as for detailed plans for a vietnam map um yeah actually that and korea are two big ones we definitely will be doing but again like i said before we can only do so many maps at the same time and right now between uh, mariana's world war ii iraq and afghanistan uh, the map team is really busy uh, the other thing with the vietnam map is uh, because of particularly rice paddies and water elevations we'll have to do some pretty significant changes to what we call the TDK, the uh, Terrain Development Kit. So that would also have to be accounted for. Uh, the other part of that too is, you know, I think we talked about even the last video, we're also working on a new map system called Spherical Earth. And um, uh, Vietnam may make more sense using that map system. So it'll come, okay. it'll come. It's just, you know, right now with just our map focus is elsewhere. And, you know, what top technology we want to use to create it is a bit up in the air still, too. Gotcha. Does the FC3 Fulcum AGS all have the same flight model thrust to weight ratio? Which one performs best in BFM? I, I believe they're all the same in uh, Flame Eclipse 3. Yep. Okay. I didn't. Uh, Angry Doom Dude says, I am part of a somewhat big community. Must than anything, I wait the DTC patiently. We'll be able to share DTC files with friends and wingmen. Love the show, love DCS. Thanks for all you do. That is the plan. And actually, even in our design specifications, one of the things we have in there is uh, the ability to share those DTC files. So, again, it's in the plans, but you know, I can't promise it because there's you know always the possibility that for one technical reason or another, it may not be possible. But, you know, off the top of my head, I can't see any technical reason why it shouldn't be. But all I can see right now, it is planned. I'm muted. Uh, Wags, are we getting a Mitsubishi Zero? How far will Marianas be expanded? How close is Dynamic Campaign to being cooked and ready? Yeah, so the A6M5 is... Uh, coming. Actually, you can even see in the video uh, several times. Uh, it'll definitely first be released as an AI. As for a flyable, we'll talk about that later. Oh, as for the uh, the Marianas, it's not being expanded. Actually, even right now, most people realize that the island chain actually goes really far north, much further north than most people realize. Even in the modern day versions, there's really no reason to expand it at this point. It's more about adapting all the islands from modern day to uh, summer 1944. Will we ever be able to drive a submarine? Why would you want to? But we'll continue. In the Marianas Trench. I want to do some <laughs> sub wars with the <laughs> Chinese. Wags is submarine. like, we have to make money on this. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's not a lucrative. I'm just saying, Jane's yeah. had a submarine sim, didn't they? Wasn't that one of the Jane's things? Eventually, yeah. they went subs back in yeah. the day. Six, 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 uh, six eighty-eight Jane. So, yeah, yeah, something like that. Uh, certainly not in the immediate plans. Uh, maybe <laughs> can Gonky drive the carrier thirty years from now? Ooh, yeah, I don't, yes. I don't like that. 
Dude. So, so driving yeah. the carrier, yeah, that will be possible with super carriers. One of the things we're adding is the ability for players mm -hmm. to, you know, set the heading, set the speed. It could be a family set carrier. Set all the lights up, set yes. up the, um, uh, the comms. Um, so I, I'm I can tell you, sometimes. Yeah, I control, so on. Sometimes when the weather's a little sketchy and you're airborne, right? Sometimes the boat will come up and ask for, hey, you know, how's the weather look over there? Oh, hey, so you recommend heading about. It's like every, yeah, it's like every day. <laughs> right. Left Can on their own accord. Clear air, please. <laughs> right. Left on their own accord, they will sail straight into the thickest fog bank possible. Uh, hot like, dog You ready. tell them like, every hey, uh, zero nine zero, and like the ship, you're like, I'm driving. Yep. <laughs> so, so I, maybe I have driven. That's like what it's, that's what it's like being an LSO. Having that control <laughs> yeah, over yeah, yeah. Wags Mayur says, Can we please add some sort of self preservation for Sam? Community has done the stuff with Skynet. I adds maybe that can be included in some, please. Hey, movers, do you want to play that phone in question? Yes, oh, I can yeah. do that now, sir. We have a phone in question, and it's relative, relevant, relevant, it relevant. Here we go. Let me find it. It's uh, the there one, you go. uh shoot down the I think incoming anti-radiation missiles, and they generally just lob missiles at the max distance possible. Uh, why not just use the community solution of Skynet IADs, which add much more challenge uh, when fighting SAMs? Why not just make it officially integrated in DCS to make SAMs much more engaging to fight against? How can I be a badass virtual fi fighter pilot? without defeating badass virtual enemies. Thanks, guys. Love your show. Bye. Hello, Mover, Conky, Wombat. Oh, sorry. Continue. Right. So it's a bit of a loaded question. I'm sure it is easy for some to evade, but certainly not for others. So what's easy for some may not be easier for others. So um, you know, such qualifications kind of need to be made. Uh, but as towards improving the SAMs, yeah, absolutely. There's no doubt about that. And I think we've even you know, talked about this uh, publicly that we are actually looking into an IAT systems. Uh, we're really hesitant about using a third party system just because the ability for us to support it. Um, you know, anything we put in the game, we have to be able to support ourselves, but also outside of TCS. So I'll say about that. So anything we do on the IAT side has to be done internally. Um, and it is certainly something that we are uh, designing. Um, whether or not it will be ready for 2024, I don't know. I can't make any promises on that. But it's certainly something we recognize and want to improve to have a much more uh, robust, or actually not even robust, a uh, no kidding uh, integrated uh, air defense system uh, that gives it a, a lot more challenge, whether it's you know uh, turning off the radars on and off, uh, whether it's getting uh, target cues from uh, other uh, radars to a, uh, a tracking radar, what have you. So it's something we're very well aware of, but it's something we're going to have to do internally. I'll just say that be careful what you wish for. Yeah. If you want this thing to be too realistic, it's going to stop being fun when it's like yeah. real life. Well, that's kind like, of what I was getting at too, is even right <laughs> now, because I have a whole other you know, element of our customer base that says the SAMs are too hard. Right. So, you know, ideally what we want, we need to do is have a more scalable SAM system to, you know, make it very challenging for, you know, the guys like this who are experts at flying DCS, but at the same time, you know, make it approachable for guys that aren't who are coming in and just getting blown out of the sky left and right and just getting frustrated and hanging it up. <laughs> so it has to be more scalable that way. And even right now in the editor, you can you know, do a degree of scaling right now, uh, also using triggers and things like that. So, you, you know, there are ways even right now to scale it, um, make it easier and harder. Um, but, you know, again, I'll be the first to you know, recognize there's additional work that still needs to be done. I want the Top Gun Maverick level of Sam's that just mm -hmm. like I... I can smoke in the air and then I can go save Gonky uh, just by my presence. People need to realize um, that there's a lot of Sam's out there where you probably not going to make it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like you, I hate breaking you get into this, like, <laughs> realism yeah. and you're just like, well, mission's over, boys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We didn't yeah. fifth gen. What are you talking yeah. about? Wags, I went up against an S400 in my F5 and I get blown out of the sky every time. It's like, yeah. yes. 
questions. Yeah, that's <laughs> Speaking yes. of too much realism, Gonky, fighter pilots okay. are facing burnout and you still don't have your article up. Uh, dude, here, here we go. Uh, awkward pause. Awkward this pause. is the whole point of going through those super chats. And just here we go. All right. Doing more with less. Do you want uh, me to add it? Or was that part of my job too? Here you go. I'm going to help you out there. Do what? Oh. Just go. It's so fun. we pick on the Air Force a lot, man, as far as uh, <laughs> as manning and, and shortages. Oh, I read this. this is and yeah. And, you know, just coming off a of drill weekend, like, you know, so Mover and I have transitioned to the non fighter world. And it's, it's refreshing and sad to see that. Well, the problem is i was gonna say it's pretty fighter world right there I don't, it's throughout no but so uh yeah this article was uh posted just a couple of days ago they ask more every year with less and less people so fighter pilots face burnout amid naval navy aviation manning shortages so we kind of talked about this before um and this article is uh they actually there's uh uh they talked to uh, the skipper of the rag which i actually know her dragon so it's kind of cool I, I thought i'd put it up here so uh, the Navy struggling to retain its top fighter pilots due to low pay, extended deployments, and fiercer competition for their skills from commercial airlines. Uh, through creative accounting and by shuffling personnel around, the Navy's been able to achieve their retention goals on paper. But for a decade, the Navy has only half the fighter pilots mm -hmm. it had hoped to retain. So, on that, right, 10 years ago, this, they, they still had the same problem. Would you agree? That's the reason I got a transition. Yeah, man. And it's crazy. The that whole reason they had that is like the reason the transition board opened up is because they were short on fighter pilots. Yeah, exactly. It says several current former military members spoke on the condition. Uh, <laughs> obviously, fear of retribution in what? such a small aviation community like uh, active duty uh, in the Navy. But military pi pilots and experts say that this isn't sustainable, that readiness will decrease unless the Navy makes changes. So the pain they're feeling today is a result of the decisions that like Wombat and I and many others made 10 years ago. Right. And it's kind of sad to see they haven't changed anything. So commander Kristen Hansen call sign dragon. I didn't know dragon was the yeah. skipper of the ride. Good for her. I didn't either. Exactly. Good no. for her. It's nice to see one of the good ones. The good it. ones. Yeah. Exactly. No kidding. Oof. So she's the skipper of VFA 122, which is a super Hornet uh, rag. So, she is this would be her uh uh so she's the commander of the uh vfa 25 i think and then this is kind of like a bonus command tour for her so i think she's probably in 06 now so I'm she's actually kind of or going to be yeah so she's actually kind of on wreck here hey after you've given a decade plus to the navy at some point you and your family have to come first too you can totally say forgotten country but that gives sorry that goes only so far uh, when you have, you know, people at home that are constantly having to watch you go away, said the dragon. Uh, what was it? Wombat, uh, recruit the sailor, retain the, the family, I think was the slogan mm -hmm. 10 years ago. And I used to just laugh at that because, yeah, I'm like, okay, yep. your actions don't match. What I don't saying. know. I mean, you know, the side note of this, I was talking about this the other day with the FOS flying with like, dude, having, I mean, and you're the same way, like you had your kids a little bit later, like, I don't know how people, our friends did it. Nope. I couldn't do it, man. I, I really no. couldn't. And maybe it is nope. because I'm older now and that may be it. You know what I mean? But like, yeah. like so maybe if I had, was presented with that, but like, I don't even all the time, like leaving on a two or three day trip, let alone yep. six, eight, 10 month deployments. Like hundred percent. Anyway, yeah. Um, the interview an instructor pilot station in Lamore, California, who plans on uh, uh, plans to resign from active duty for an airline job has worked so many extra hours. He said, I did the math and I make less per hour than most Chick-fil-A employees. I believe that. And no free chicken. So no. like <laughs> that's bad but on you both. You still of have to say it's my pleasure. <laughs> yeah. 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 They exactly. still make you say it, even without the free chicken. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh yeah. So Vice Admiral Robert Burke, Chief of Naval Personnel from 18 to 19, testified for the Congressional Subcommittee on Military Personnel that in July of 2019, mid-level officer retention represents our greatest challenge. Resignations have also increased among junior and se senior aviators due in part to intense competition from the private industry. He cited this trending 
this trend beginning uh, in 2009, which is Wombat and I's time frame, which I can absolutely agree with that. Oh, yeah. Uh, the 2019 Department of Defense report to Congress acknowledged that a global supply and demand imbalance for commercial pilots means the airlines are hiring increased rates while the military estimates needing more than 75 pilots in the next 20 years. The airlines will need 206,000 over the same period. So the Navy jet bonus for fiscal year 23 is 35,000 a year before taxes and requires an additional five to seven years of service and amount pilots say is inadequate to convince them to stay. So let's throw money at the problem. We've talked about uh, that before. Doesn't yeah, matter. exactly. This, this here is, I don't know, this part of the archive slightly is, is off my opinion, but a fighter pilot who departs naval aviation after 10 years of service would start as an FO at a commercial company at United. That salary is approximately 199,000 a year. Uh, where I work, based on uh, their Navy training and capabilities. They can promote to captain within a year and earn 312000 annually. A Navy jet pilot station, Lamar, with 10 years of service, makes 104000 That is a little inaccurate. I think 10 years ago, uh, as a lieutenant at 10 years, I think I was at around 120 something like that. No, you weren't. No, you I think weren't. think so. No, you weren't. What were you? Trust me, you were not. I still remember, because my wife and I talk about this, my last month in active duty in Meridian, I made six thousand dollars in a month. So you are not at one hundred and ten. Ten. Really? Years, my yeah. Maybe I'm you're, including my wife's. Maybe you yeah. Were, you you there is something mentally that got blocked when you went over to Malaysia and money wise. Maybe. I'm telling you because I'll have to look. Every, Maybe I'm including my wife. That says right there. One hundred four. Um, that's it. I, I mean, for <laughs> dude, that's the wow. problem, man. And. I will say that yes, at United or major airline, you probably start out about 110. Remember, it's new pay scales now, right? Most majors got a new mm -hmm. contract, and yeah, I mean, promote to captain within a year mm -hmm, or less. I mean, hmm. it's an issue. The Navy is fighting. The military is fighting a problem without having the most current and up to date information. In fact, you know, they're fighting it against pay scales that are not accurate anymore, and it's. You can't throw money at this problem and fix it. It's just yeah, not going to happen. I thought I made more than that. Anyways. Um, you did not. Trust me. Each pilot shared the same love and passion for flying jets. Top Gun pilots reviewed and in, in being at the peak of their tactical prowess, prowess and fulfilling childhood dreams. Yet many stories ended the same burnout. I enjoyed it being my whole life and letting everything else kind of fall by the wayside. I'm getting out after this tour because I'm incredibly burned out. Uh, deployments in two years isn't going to help said a lieutenant commander approaching her end of uh, contract who is currently on board the carrier out at sea the so, author of this article is also a quitter yes she made it, she made it 10 years yes she, yeah. she basically I mean, did her commitment and then went and did everything else yes uh okay stop sharing um yeah, the one thing I'll say about that, you know, they always look at the airlines. It's it's the airlines' fault. I actually think that is leadership scapegoat because 100%. Uh, in two thousand nine, when the, they did their little thing and said this was a problem in 09, there was none of this hiring of air, airline hiring in two thousand nine. They had the same problem, yeah. uh, and I was, you know, I was part of the ones that many that decided to leave, and airlines weren't hiring uh, back then, so. I, I always go back to leadership needs to take a look. I mean, they can, it's the airline thing is an easy scapegoat. Look how much money they can make. Uh, you know, Hey boss, I'm not, do, we're not doing anything wrong. It's the airline's fault. But I, I think that if that landscape changed, sure. Some people would, would stay, but you can only kick, kick the dog so many times, you know? Yep. I remember, so, and I think I've said it on here. I remember uh, when I was in Meridian, one of the skippers went to, to beepers and they were having a big manning thing. Now this was 2012. Yep. Right. So, I yep. mean, you know, the hiring's coming, right? Um, it it's almost crazy. came in 2008, 2009, but then it, it didn't. Um, and I remember one of the skippers who's, I mean, I, I'm a friend with the guy's great, great skipper. He asked, uh, you know, he asked the, the guy in charge of person at the time, like, Hey, we see this hiring coming what's your yep. plan? And the answer yep. was, we don't see it as a problem. And I remember telling that story to my dad and my dad laughed. He goes, what the Admiral said was, we don't see it as a problem. But what he meant is I don't see it as my problem because by the time it yeah. happens, it's going to be gone. And that's why it makes it so easy for them to be like, Oh, it's the airline's fault. It's the airline's fault. It's like, no, dude, no. Like 
the people that go into being military aviators, they don't do it. Not one person that goes in to flying pointy nose jets or anything off an aircraft carrier or any bomber goes into it thinking about money. They go into it thinking about service. And at some point during that, they lose that. They don't lose that because of money, because most of these guys are, you know, in their tw late 20s. Like, dude, I didn't give a damn about money in my late 20s. I just wanted to fly fast and have fun. Right. Well, like, come on, man. It's because the work environment that you're in becomes so damn toxic that they go, well, this sucks. Hold on. What's over there? Oh, a crap ton of money. You know what makes a work environment less toxic? A crap ton of money. <laughs> Well, Sorry. I mean, Wags, the, like the whole reason that DCS is so popularized, everybody like, I want to be a fighter pilot, never was, you know, and it's like, how can you make the dream job like the worst job? Let the government handle it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Just let the government, don't let the government get a hold of DCS, man. That's the moral of the story. Well, one of the reasons <laughs> I left government service a long time. It's yeah. Like it's such yeah, BS it's crazy. that they're sitting here and they're blaming the airlines. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm just thankful that pilots that are willing to, you know, Les Mover says it repeatedly, you know, write a blank check up to including their lives, have an option to go do something with their skill set that is lucrative. I'm happy for that because well, we're, the, the yeah. military and the government has just turned their backs on people and they repeatedly do this. And then the leadership just stands there and goes, well, I don't get it. I don't understand what's happening. I mean, why doesn't everybody want to be part of our team? And it's like, well, because frankly, your team sucks. <laughs> How about that? Look after your people. It's not that cosmic, you know. It's yeah. this is basic leadership. Like, sorry. <laughs> oh no, it's, it's just uh, such BS, man. Like, Mr. take Wombat. care of your freaking people. Like, just take care of your people. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we've kicked the navy in the teeth a little bit as we military. Should. Sorry, Everybody. yeah, it's military, but usually we're complaining about the air force reserves. That's kind of hey, nice. Yeah. So quick question. Is yes. there any like difference between retention on fighter versus heavies? That's a great question. On that. That is a good question. And I, I think anecdotally, and, and this is just from the people I've talked to WAGs in, in my career now is I think you'll find more fighter pilots when they became fighter pilots that assumed they would do it for a full career. Mm -hmm. And once they got heavies or bombers or god mm -hmm. help us e2s they looked at other things right and they're like well mm -hmm. i'll do it it's just it's not the same. for whatever reason and, and again that's not everybody right there's there's sure. there's people that i mean i flew um with an fo and and it was like i didn't want to fly fighters that was not my thing i had no desire to do it this was my plan all along, right? But I think what you you find is that the the pointy nose community tends to be the last to be affected by some of this because a lot of people are like, hey, I'll go fly heavy, get my hours. This was my plan. You know, my dad was an airline pilot or whatever. That's what he did. Or right. so I think, you know, at least on the active duty side. Now on the guard side, maybe it's a little different because those guys have a different animal, right? I mean, you're you're playing a different game when you're talking guard and and your your future follow on career type stuff. But I, I would say most of the people that I knew that selected fighters right out of the get go, they were going to be lifers. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were. I mean, there was a time in a cold, you're looking Air at one space. Well, that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. where a young before he was yeah. gonky and a young before he was wombat would sit there and be like, 20 years, I wish you could be longer. Yeah. And something <laughs> happened during that time, you know, well, that it, it's, it, Wags, it, and again, that's the military. The military freaking ruined it. There so, was a, sorry, go ahead, dude. I was just going to say, so are the guard like Peter pilots having the same issue as well? I would, you probably I would have, say they probably have less. Mover, yeah, what you this more hometown. For, for what are you the talking guard about? Units guard units retention wise. Guard pilot. It's across the board. Nobody wants to do this full time. So you Wags, go, like you can go do anything full time right now because nobody wants like the ideal life is to be a drill status guardsman or a tr yeah part time do right. your flying and go home nobody wants to do all the nonsense that's associated with it yeah so like i mean this is 10 years ago but i i talked to some heavy guys even back then active duty air force types and you know they would tell me they're like hey you know i'm i'm gone air mobility command i'm gone like 10 months out of the year if you total mm -hmm. all my days gone you know, because wow. those air those airplanes don't do one hour sorties, right? Sure. There. No, um, do a lot. Yeah. So I think Mover's probably right. It's probably 
you know, the core of the problem is probably the same. The story mm -hmm. might be a little different across the, uh, the different airframes, but, um, I mean, leadership at the highest level has a, has a, has a problem, you know, not just, uh, you know, recruiting enlisted people, but like you're, you know, even your more skilled, uh, types are, are choosing not to serve, which is not good for tomorrow. Right. So, so no. last, last question, what about with the, um, uh, ground support, same issue? Yeah. If you look at the recruiting, uh, across the board, all the services, I think, except for the Marines have missed. Uh, their numbers and mm. we've done a couple articles where I think the Air Force has decided to they don't say lower the standards they just say like remove some of their so you know some things that weren't an issue before that were an issue before may not be now in an effort to try to get more people accepted um, in their defense they are fighting we talked a little bit about it early the newer generation of young people they're just not as uh uh, for lack of better words, healthy, <laughs> you know, uh, overweight is an issue. Uh, you know, being on all kinds of meds is an issue. So it's definitely an uphill battle, but, um, uh, you know, it's, I, I worry about tomorrow <laughs> mm -hmm. across the board. But. Yep. Um, cool. All right. Let's do, uh, I don't know, something a little more fun. HUD history. I, <laughs> I am myself am a HUD cripple. Although I didn't start that way, neither did uh, neither did want that. But I did know a lot. This is a uh, the five five fun facts about the HUD. I think it's funny mover. That's a Raptor, isn't it? Scroll up. I'm pretty sure is that a Raptor? No, is that an no, it's a block wow. forty or forty two. It looks like Look at Raptor you, doesn't have a Jehemix. Yeah, that's yeah, what I was going to say. He's got uh, the War HUD as well. That's the block forty more than likely. It? All right, so my Air Force aircraft wreck he is. <laughs> Those. Oh, the old, uh, <laughs> coming up low altitude the lantern and stuff yeah warhood what, block, wait, what block did you fly uh i flew that i flew the 25 the 30 the 42 dang look at you all right fun five facts early developments during world war ii hud like devices were first developed for the military during the early 1940s hud like devices were first developed yeah, that says it twice. <laughs> um, heads you up can display. say that again. Yeah, you can say that again. <laughs> heads up displays under advanced technology that evolved from the reflector site used in military fighter aircraft before World War One. The gyro gun site was a significant improvement that added a radical that moved based on the aircraft speed and turn rate to calculate the lead uh, necessary to hit a target ac accurately. I actually didn't know how development started that far back. I thought it was a more recent technology. So it says during the 40s, UK's telecommunications research establishment combined the image from a radar tube with a projection from their standard gyro gun sight on a flat windscreen area and later in the gun sight. Groundbreaking innovation for night fighter pilots the Royal, Royal Air Force. This technology allowed pilots to see their surroundings better and identify enemy planes. And then it says uh, after World War II, advancements continued. The U.S. Navy became interested in using a uh, mock heads-up display in 1955 uh, designed to help pilots focus on their eyes while monitoring important information uh, from the aircraft they were doing flight, such as altitude and airspeed. However, it took some time before the HUD was successfully implemented into, air, into aircraft as further research and development were needed to refine the technology. So again, pretty, pretty early. The world's first HUD was aboard a Royal Navy aircraft. So... I guess the Buccaneer was the first airplane to have some sort of HUD, which first flew in uh, 1958. It doesn't really say much about the capabilities of it, but that would be it, which obviously one of the early jets. Um, let's see the, the newer generation of HUD technology. So I kind of, I guess what we have today, uh, HUD technology developed into basically helmet mounted, sites or helmet mounted helmet mounted displays so you know as a as a hud cripple so i most of my flying experience was without a helmet i i have very limited helmet experience but wags play in dcs like the whole the helmet and movers called it cheating but by being able to see all the symbology i would see in the hud at all times while i'm looking around you know like trying to fight that yeah. actually took a lot of place of the feel Mm -hmm. if, that, if that makes sense because oh, yeah. i could i could fly and fight the airplane 
based on the numbers, which with just a HUD, you know, you have to use feel, right? Because if you turn yep. your head, the HUD doesn't go with you. So, but the, right. uh, the helmet mounted, you know, display is the, uh, is the HUD that goes with you, I guess, wherever you want to look. So, Wombat, did you fly with the helmet at all? No. Mm -mm. No experience? None. And, no. And Mover, did you have any, did you, did you fly with it in the F-16? No, just the Hornet. We got it in the sim. Okay. So I got spun up in the sim and then we never, I left. Never. I got you. So I uh, flew it there. Did they ever go helmet on those jets that you were, those Hornets? I don't think yeah. so. Did they? Did they? Yeah. I can't remember. They were just, well, I mean, Donkey, you left like on. six months after me, but right. They were going to it because um and then eventually for sure when they got the C models, but they were going to it because I got fitted for one and I was in the sim doing it. Mm. Interesting. Um, yeah. Getting trained up for it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty cool. Um, I wish I had more experience with it, but uh Historically, the development of helmet mounted displays dates back to 1962. Again, I didn't realize it went that far back. Mm. Um, so, comp okay, they use a compact CRT based monocular display. However, the first operational use of helmet mounted displays was by the South African Air Force in the 1970s with the Mirage aircraft. Equipped with a locally developed helmet mounted site, this early adaptation of helmet mounted display technology demonstrated its effectiveness in combat, particularly and off foresight attacks, which we kind of just talked about. Um, it's also extremely useful, obviously, in the uh, air to ground, air to surface, whatever. Um, and then it talks about uh, number five, the F-30, or four, the F-35 is equipped with the latest uh, gen of helmet-mounted display. So uh, it's developed by Northrop Grumman and Raytheon. It's a network of high resolution infrared sensors distributed around the aircraft's airframe. These sensors provide unobstructed spherical coverage functioning autonomously, autonomously without requiring pilot input or aiming. Uh, I would like to try that. That sounds awfully cool. Uh, the DAS offers three fundamental functions, missile detection, tracking, aircraft detection and tracking, and providing imagery for cockpit displays and pilot night vision. These capabilities are crucial for maintaining situational awareness and high threat situations so yeah the f-35 has a pretty amazing helmet so i've read it's all part of the uh, sensor fusion that airplane employs um number five <laughs> this one i thought was kind of funny i did fail my hearing test uh, the first time this weekend for my flight physical but then i passed so maybe i could use a helmet mounted uh, <laughs> a helmet with uh, some of this technology. So the Striker 2, manufactured by BAE, offers a unique 3D audio feature with intelligent active noise reduction. This technology provides pilots with 360-degree directional audio, allowing them to hear threats about their position. That's cool. Accompanied by color symbology. So it goes on to say you can customize that. But uh, we don't have that helmet here in the States. But... This technology offers 360, 360 degree directional audio enhancing. Repeated itself, my apologies. Uh, from enhancing situational awareness to, to providing precise targeting capabilities, HUDs have revolutionized both military and civilian aviation, paving the way for more advanced, safe, and efficient flight operations. This evolution, which started in the 40s, signifies, signifies a move towards more intuitive user-friendly interface, decreasing pilot workloads, and enhancing uh, safety. Um, Wombat, do you guys have HUD in the... Is there... Does the Airbus have a HUD? Do they have models? That uh, have HUD? They, I believe they do. We don't have it. So we don't use the HUD. So. Yeah. So I, I started flying in my military career without a HUD. And I don't... Wombat, you probably, you probably have more of the blend, but, you know, it's all what you're trained in. I flew the T-45A and I CQ'd on it and it had a, it had a, a HUD that didn't tell you anything really. Uh, we didn't use it for instrument flying or anything, but you know, I transitioned for me, it was kind of an easy transition from uh, no HUD to HUD. And then obviously when I went back to no HUD flying a T-3 alpha, that was a kick in the brain. So it, uh, the HUD definitely, just the ability to look outside but still see the information you need to see is is huge for SA because you're not in your cockpit. And then obviously the helmet, being able to look around, see threats while seeing your own uh, ship flight parameters, I think is huge. It did mention the art in the in the article, but I also found that 
cast, man, when you're doing cast with a helmet, the whole exactly what are we talking about on the ground, right? So your flight lead, the guys on the ground, it just alleviates so much of that confusion because my real world cast experience was without a helmet and it was a lot of, you know, literally talking eyes on, you know, contact, hey, this unit of measure, looking at my little green and black FLIR. Okay, it's an L-shaped field. And then like looking outside the cockpit. So I would argue probably an air to ground, it's probably a much more of an SA builder than an air to air, but I don't know. I, I'm, oh, yeah, now, I'm, sure I'm a awesome hood cripple. I'll reason. take all the technology. What do you guys think? I mean, yeah, absolutely. I want one in the Airbus. In the Airbus. One. Hoover, did you got did you got y'all have them in the seven three? The captain does. So Nothing when you get your type rating, you fly with it uh in their left seat, but it's just the captain. Uh the seven eight, I think, has dual HUDs, but mm. not on the FO side on the seven three. I mean you guys tried nice. it. I mean, I've flown the I've flown the seven three sim with the HUD. It's it's nice. I mean it I works the say. same. It works so, the same. That's what, you know, that's you, what, you have the flight path vector, you just put the thing on the thing, essentially. That's what they use in lieu of the cat three coupled approach. So the mm -hmm. auto land. They didn't pay for the auto land certification. So you can take it down to I think 50 feet with yeah, the wow. potentially with the HUD. Over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. yeah. Right yeah, out would, 50 feet. Yeah, the airbuses we fly don't have it. And it is it's so it like I don't know the human. But you aspect. guys can do Cat Three Auto Lands, right? I mean, you have that. Do you Can know what that is? That, when it's, it's, that's when the weather's really, really scary and bad. The plane could land. You have no, 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 it oh. won't, no, no Auto Land for us, dude. No, you don't have Auto Land. No, I mean the airplane will do it, but. Uh, well, no. can it? That's the thing. Will it? Yeah. Are you sure? Well, that's what the that's what all the captains I've flown with have told me. They're like, and you believe? They, and they've shown me how to do it. I'm like, ah. But huh. the the whole, you know, I've, I've actually flown a couple down pretty close to, to men's and it's pretty crazy. Just that just that little eye shift from inside to outside. Mm -hmm. Like I really miss the HUD where I'm always outside and I'm just waiting. Right. So because it does, it's you know, it's a <laughs> it's a your eyes have to shift and focus and it it does make a difference. So I don't know I yeah. mean, where I'm at. We'll never see it, <laughs> but <laughs> at least in the civilian world in my military days are over. But, uh, but yeah, I don't know. Any reattacks on that? Buy an RV eight and they, people are developing hoods for those things. Are they really? T bear awesome. was talking about some dude that had like the, it would use the TCAS and do ranging yeah. for like gunshots and aim a uh, little simulated Shit. aim nine and stuff. Yeah. Um, well, I, I like the whole man, the whole, uh, you know, I just uh, HUD technology being that old to me is pretty amazing because I thought it was, new yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, Conky, so, let me uh let's do some of your chats because yeah. the piling up while you get ready. Wags, uh, Wags is so a quick question first. So, yes, when sir. you guys did your Hornet CQ, did you have to do a HUD out recovery only in the sim? Only in the sim, that's yeah, not that's true a, for everybody. That's not <laughs> really, true for it's everybody. An, it's, oh, a, it's an emergency, isn't it? Like, it it's because that's I your had primary... four of those on my initial CQ, really? I told four that of them? story. Yeah, so I had my initial CQ and I had a loose HUD. So when you take the cat shot, yeah. the HUD would go out. And I came around the bad. pattern, declared the emergency, and the LSOs talked me down and I trap and it would reseed itself. So this happened four times. And wow. they're like, oh, well, I can handle it. He flew the E2. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, no, <laughs> it's very different. Like, that's not fair. And then they thought I was making it up. And I'm like, dude, I'm not making it. Like, I'm like, can you fix this? Because I don't want to have a HUD in my lap on a cat shot. I mean, that thing will kill you. So, yeah, but it was just a loose connection. Hmm. Yeah. I lost the HUD on the cat shot. I, oh, I was, I was scared. And then when I hit the end, it came back. I was like, oh, thank God. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was like, thank God. I could see that happening too. Yeah. Mine just yeah. didn't. It, it was, it was far enough that, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know. All right. Uh, we talked about the WAGs, I ads. Gonky, prepare yourself. Yes. The wombat, the wombat thing, right? The what? Wags, any word oh. on new static oh. buildings and other units, other country of military equipment, not in game? Well, we talked about, you know, the uh, MRAP and the new M1. Uh, outside of that, there are some additional uh, air and naval units we're working on, but we haven't announced those yet. 
Gotcha. Uh, Zippers Forever says the wheels need to be chalked. Does anyone read the Natops? He's talking about Gonkey's toilet. Toilet has <laughs> wheels. Rab fact for A6, A1D update. What? I have no hmm. idea what that means. Yeah. Okay. Oh, A1D is talking about the um, Sky Raider. Uh, Sky Raider. Uh, that's done by a third party. And generally, as a rule, I don't comment on updates for third party products. I have no idea what Rab fact is. Probably an airborne FAC, FAC A. Maybe like I've never heard that for, expression before. Uh, it's probably just a generic. Mm -hmm. uh, any plans to go connect current maps together? It's not possible with the current map technology. Again, that's the whole reason, biggest reason why we're going to a whole new map technology that we're calling spherical Earth that will allow us to do that. Oh, uh, boy. People were citing DCS as the reason the Earth is flat. Oh, You're going to crush their worlds. Nice. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> please give an update on the DCS dynamic campaign. Is 2025 a realistic time frame? Uh, for testing, certainly. But I will direct our rod to take a look at the newsletter we did, I think, literally just one or two weeks ago, where we did a whole write-up just on the dynamic campaign. Uh, I think he probably missed that. Garrett, thanks, man. Uh, your four should all fly the EA6B together <laughs> in DCS. Dibs, dibs on the pilot seat. Dibs on the pilot seat. Movers in the back. Yeah, back right. <laughs> back right, that's right. <laughs> uh, what is dynamic slot? So Ozdad says, mm -hmm. any news on dynamic slots coming to DCS? Also, do you have any idea if the ground AI will be able to cross bridges and generally be more intelligent with their pathfinding? So for dynamic slots, it's actually in our internal version right now, it's still in testing. Actually, I'm a little surprised it hasn't been released yet. There may be something going on with a bug there, but I definitely see that, you know, quote unquote, coming soon. Uh, and it looks really cool. As for AI not crossing bridges, I don't know what he's talking about. I have AI crossing bridges all the time. Um, I would suggest you take a look at the mission editor form we have set up and include one of his missions as have, he's having problems with. We have a lot of really talented mission designers that could help him. Gotcha. Nice. Add vodka for Red 4. Oh, look, Luna Bell's here. Hey, Luna. Uh, she's, she's add right. vodka for DCS. What is a vodka setting? You know, to put the maybe the coolant. Is that like super afterburner? It's well, when Galaxy like pees the, in the tank. Well, like some of the <laughs> older, I guess, Russian aircraft, they used what, like pure alcohol for the yeah. system, and they were That's sucking right. that and off. They, for and they would drinks. drink it, right? Yeah, they would drink it. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, question Have the ground units damage radius been reworked, especially infantry? You can shoot right beside them and they don't die. Kind of ruins helo missions. So with the current system right now, it's all based on blast radius, uh, not fragmentation. But what we did is then we expanded that blast fragment, uh, the blast radius to account for the fragmentation. But it was a bit of a kludge. But what we're working on you know, right now is actually adding a no kidding fragmentation model in addition to the blast pressure wave damage as well. Uh, the other thing I'll comment on that is a lot of the units right now, they basically have three states. They have a completely live state. They have a damaged state where they're smoking and then a, a complete dis destroyed state. There's really not a whole lot of intermediate damage effects in between like a, a vehicle being tracked, uh, sensors being blown off or things like that. So a lot of times people will have a unit uh, damaged, but you won't see that in the uh, physical model. It's not until you actually go into what we call the uh, the map view, the F10 view, that you can actually see the level of damage incurred by that unit. Um, so I think it's a combination of one, we need to have better visual damage modeling to get across that you actually was damaged. And two, uh, we also need to have that no kidding fragmentation uh, aspect of the blast also included. I'm amazed, right. Wags, the uh, like what Mover and I, I was in the P-51, he was in the Hornet. I literally mm -hmm. hit him with one bullet, it seemed like. Remember, oh. Mover the first? And like, you Probably flew for far. another. Well, yeah, he flew oh, for it, like it, another. It fell another, apart, yeah. yeah. Yeah, another minute. And then all of a sudden, like, he just like blew up. shuttle, like, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, that's pretty cool. Because Gonky cheats with his face shots. No. <laughs> Good mm -hmm. shots. No, Will says, I was away <laughs> from my kids for a winter. My son said, why does daddy have a new family? That hurt. Respect <laughs> to all of you who sacrifice for your loved ones. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it sucks. Flight engineer really with mean. six desert deployments from 03 to 06 is when Crazy Pete burned out. Nice, man. 
uh archeronian i really wish enlisted could be pilots like in world war ii if so i would they, enroll they still in, the can in the army you can do it in the army uh, warrant officer you can't yeah. be enlisted you'd be a warrant officer that's right um, while you're, I sent the voice call on DCS have options in ME to change Sam's adding more options like self-preservation will be a great game game. Okay. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. And so do we, you know, again, um, it's something we're very well aware of and we definitely want to do again. I know I always, always sound like a broken record on these. It's just a matter of having, uh, the time and resources and AI is a really big one right now we're working on. So our A time AI teams are very stretched thin right now as well. Cool. Matt says from the enlisted flying side, it's interesting to see pilots get all the buzz about retention. Burnout has been in hitting enlisted flight rules for as long. There's outside industry to draw them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I was kind of getting uh, my question earlier. Yeah. Uh, Weddy and Mags asked me if I fall, fell asleep. No, I was looking down at current breaking uh, news over here. Deep intel. Uh, deep. Docky? <laughs> you, you piss people off with this. Dude, it's, I, I can't it's, tell you how many triggered people get. Oh, well, you got to go. Should be uplifting everybody. It's like, shut up. I'm I'm irritated. He hasn't made fun of us. Honestly, we're giving him free publicity. Nah, dude, who cares? <laughs> so, like, why? Well, he's got more followers than us. Uh, by 2009, most it. of my peer group was disgusted with the lies and whitewashing rally in Iraq and Afghanistan. Both my kids gave up on the military after living through my seven kinetic wow. deployments. Dang, dude. That's seven, a lot. Geez. And then, uh, Gonky, you're racking up on the rupees. My ear says, by the way, both Wags and Wombat Mental Health Men has been very helpful. Also, Wags, have you had a Delta Sim yet? What's no. So, um, uh, Wombat and I agreed on a, a couple week window, and now uh, Wombat's working on coordinating that on his end. So, hopefully, we'll make it happen um, uh, early spring this year. Nice. Nice. Are there, AJS says less people want to be fighter pilots these days and mechanic, and there's definitely less wanting to work on cars now too. All the guys want to be into TikTok stars. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> who does at times? Uh, yeah. uh, it's frowned upon. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. And then we focus on the pointy end of the service as Hamath, but the ground crew, the aircraft mechanics suffer as well. No, that's a big yeah. focus too. It is. Um, all right. Gonky, you wanted yes. to talk about Wombat's war wagon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Party oh, bus. well we got in a do loop there yeah so this one uh literally i found it uh just prior to us hopping on here so i just thought i didn't realize wombat was going to bless us with his uh <laughs> with his presence so here we are the e2 hawkeye is unstoppable wombat stop me if Backed. you see anything that's Done. not <laughs> end of story <laughs> thank you i agree I, moving on you need Move to fact on. check this all right E2 Hawkeye has been on active duty service for six de decades, built by Northrop Grumman. The E2 can operate all weather from carrier decks to provide tactical airborne early warning. AEW. The Hawkeye has been on active duty service for six de Oh, gosh, dude. The <laughs> <laughs> Designed in the 50s, hard. the Hawkeye took his maiden flight in 1960, entered service in 64. Really? Yeah. And today, remarkably, the E2 is still in production. The E2 has remained in production since 1960, making the Hawkeye the longest produced carrier based aircraft ever wombat did you fly the d is that still the newest one i have not flown the d i was e2c how old was the one airplanes you were flying some of them are brand new we got them brand new really delivered yeah 602 before uh the real life clipper bent it was brand new from the factory wow okay mm -hmm. well here we're gonna meet the hawkeye the e2 is designed to replace the e1 tracer and the e2 is the first aircraft ever Built from scratch specifically for airborne early warning, the airborne early warning aircraft that came before the E-2 was modified from existing aircraft. Uh, the engines of the E-2 make a distinct humming sound, so naturally the aircraft has earned the nickname Hummer. Uh, the E-2 and its humming engine are rather distinct on board the carrier, most mostly popular with jet engine aircraft like the Hornet and F-35. Wombat, can, could you demonstrate the sound? Are you a Hummer driver? Are you? <laughs> I am. Could you demonstrate a Hummer for us? I, I mean, uh -huh. the sound. Okay, yes. We'll just keep going here. <laughs> keep going. <laughs> the e well, no, is... and it's funny because the four blade, if you remember, was different than the eight blade. It changed it was. The pitch significantly. Yeah. So I thought the eight blade wasn't bad. That's just me. Um, it sounded like the... angry bees. Yes, I prefer that over the. Anyways, the while the E-2 has served steadily as a workhorse, success story, the initial design process was troubled. For one, the Navy determined that the next 
uh, airborne early warning aircraft should integrate data with the naval tactical data system found aboard Navy vessels. Then the Navy demanded the E-2 be able to land on aircraft carriers, which was especially difficult in the 50s. In the 1950s, the U.S. Navy operated World War II era, era aircraft carriers. Uh, let's see here. A finished product, E-2 Hawkeye featured high wings, two Allison T-56 turboprop engines to land on carriers, and uh, obviously retractable landing gear. The most distinctive feature of the E-2 was the 24-foot diameter rotating radar dome known as the Rotodome. Is that true? They, they call it the yes. Rotodome. Mm -hmm. the, the Rotodome contains the E-2's long-range radar and IFF system, basically the equipment that allows E-2 to perform the mission it was designed to perform. The E-2 is the only carrier-based airplane that features a Rotodome. True. Typically, Rotodome-equipped aircraft, uh, the E-3 Sentry, for example, are land-based. Yes, they are. One that ever seen them pull that thing off. For, do they ever pull that thing off for maintenance? Like, have yeah. you ever seen an E-2 without it, really? Yeah, I always wanted to fly one. Will never. it fly without it? 100%. There's actually like, a section in ATOPS that delineates its uh, its stats for if you get it without it. Really? So mm -hmm. when you if you do an FCF, do you, is the dome on or off or does it matter? No, it's on. it's on. It's very the only time that they would take them off is if it was going down to like depot level maintenance. I got gotcha. you. To save space aboard the carrier that features uh, a stow wing, so folding wing, wings, which fold up because the Hawkeye is a big airplane. When in use, the E-2 requires a five-person crew up front, pilot, co-pilot in the back, and below the rotodome, a combat information center office, an air control officer, and a radar operator. Although the E-2 has enjoyed an enduring service history, the plane has had problems. Most pressingly, the E-2 had an inadequate cooling system, but it looks like they remedied that with the newer ones. Did you guys have any cooling systems with the newer ones? uh the we did have issues um, the electronics with the electronics that was always something the ro was working on was to make sure if you lost yeah. that cooling your radar is coming down quick gotcha it says the u.s navy is not the only military using the hawkeye the e2 has been exported mexico france taiwan egypt and japan all rely on the e2 for trustworthy airborne early warning so that is why the uh, hawkeye is unstoppable so What's here's the, the question, Naval Aviation Gonkey. Why does it have four tails? Um, it has four tails probably because the dome blocks the airflow. False. Dang it. Anything? One Any for ideas? each Wizzo. <laughs> also false because there's three oh. and they're not Wizzos. Wags, because, take a stab. <laughs> because you can't go too high because it would block signals. So to get the amount of yaw control, you have to have four smaller ones. Close. Uh, oh. You can't go too high because it had to fit aboard the carrier and go in the right. hangar like okay. the S3. So the original design actually had a single tail that would fold down like the S3. Mm -hmm. uh, but it still was too big because it doesn't have counter rotating props. So they go the same direction. So lots of P factor. So they went with the split rudder design and original, the second design only had three tails, two on the left and one on the right. Mm. Whoa. Uh huh. Because that's all yeah. you need aerodynamically. Uh, right. And the Navy said that looks dumb. So they put up another tail. So there's four tails, but only three rudders on that plane. If you look at it. So both oh, engines really? are spinning the same way. They're not. They're both spinning the same way. Ah, yeah. oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So the the inboard tail on the right side, co-pilot side, does not have a rudder. Huh. It's just there for looks. Why didn't they do counter rotating to eliminate the P factor? Because that would have made sense. But no, not in like the Air Force. If they had operated this, absolutely would have had it because yeah, the like resources. But if you think, yeah, you think Navy ship space is critical so if you have counter rotating you have to have two different oh, gearboxes two different engines two right. different prop assemblies everything so i understand makes sense okay so they just made better pilots nice. yeah, cheaper. wags is smarter than us on this stuff no i get lucky every night is there. smarter than us God, wags is the real pilot we're all just imposters that's a very low bar <laughs> you could have just stopped it wags is smarter than us that's true low 100%. bar 100 all right have we uh yeah, it's dumping here. Can you guys hear that? Radio ring? Beacon Forward Air Control is what the RBFAC. Ah. Uh, and can we get a Russian version of the Sea Was soon? Dude, you're getting all the rupees. You're going to be a, hmm. 
a rupier. I don't know. Well, I'm pretty. I'm a, so <laughs> on the Russian, you know, both are like on the Kuznetsov and the other ones. Uh, unless I'm completely missing something, I already have a, a, a equivalent of their system. Uh, both the gun missile systems as well as the pure uh, gun system, uh, similar to you know, like a Seaways. Got gotcha. so a little confused on that question. Gonky, do you have any other topics or can we move on? No, that's it, man. I mean, we're at almost two and a half hours. Yeah, I was thinking we might save the mental health minute for next time at the two and a half hour point and just uh, we can preview the next dog fight this weekend. It's P51 versus P51, mono e mono. Oh, uh, the plot thins. <laughs> okay. So, my only, oh, you've already recorded, so it doesn't <laughs> matter now. But, you know, just watching the video before, actually, I need to watch more of Gonky's point of view. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's it's really easy to over control on the stick, install oh, it, yeah. you know, get that kind of snap on you. So, so Wags, how, how do you fly? Like when it starts to go, what do you do? Because Mover and I did two different things. I just come back on the stick okay, um, and not stall that wing. So what I do, and, you and just come back on the throttle with there. Yeah, and, that's and, what and, I was doing. And keeping my speed up. I just don't get slow. Not in no, it'll do a fast one. Oh, it'll do a fast yeah, one. It will. <laughs> it yeah, will just, snap. To, it'll snap roll on you going fast too. Yeah, Wags, just, that honestly, the P51 was my favorite because uh, I... Yeah. I actually like I had to use my brain a little, you know, you just don't point yeah. it and go. So I, I well, really enjoyed it. I, I think, you know, one of the most difficult things and I see this actually with real fighter pilots more than gamers is stick force. Oh, because, yeah. you know, all the guys who have done it for real, you know, they have a lot of muscle memory about like if you're a Viper, you want to go nine G, you go, you know, 20 pounds full grunt yes. and or even the Hornet. You're going to have different stick forces, you know, based on, you know, what the conditions of the aircraft are at that point. Whereas, you know, 99.9 .9 joysticks you have on your desk, it's going to be the same force throughout practically. So it's really easy to, you know, go full back stick uh, without that um, feedback of yeah. the stick of the force to say, hey, I'm really pushing at this point. And which I, you know, I think you talked about this earlier, too. We we're talking about the HUD that you also don't have that, you know, feel in your pants of what the aircraft is doing and how close it is to depart. So, yeah. so I think between not having that uh, um, physical feedback from the aircraft combined with the lack of stick forces that you would associate based pretty like on a, a high speed situation, it's really easy to over control the aircraft sometimes. Yeah, I, I started learning really quick, though, like the visuals, though, right? So yeah. visually it would give you, I could almost see above it. Well, also, if you, listen, would go. If, you if you put the volume up kind of high, if when you start to get to a higher alpha state on the uh, on the Mustang, you'll actually hear a little bit of a whistling sound. Uh oh. So when I start to hear that, I'll back off on the alpha just a little bit until it goes away. Yeah, I couldn't. I had the sound of the 50 cows just blowing uh, holes in movers jet. So I couldn't hear that. Right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Donkey is unable to do what's called a gun strike kill. It's all snapshots. It's all, it's all in the face. Uh, Luke he he doesn't shots. know how to maneuver to a control zone at all. Oh. <laughs> hey, saying. man, a kill's a kill, bro. Just saying. Top Gun okay. recommends you go to the true control zone. Mm hmm. That's how you get dead fighting a, a real, anyways. <laughs> so you're noticed in uh, Star Wars New Hope in the battle. I'm just not going to complete dork here. But in the battle for the uh, Death Star, the sh most, most of the shots that Luke Skywalker takes are face shots. See, I have the force, bro. There you yeah, go. Gonky. That means you're a nerd. <sighs> Look, man. Mm -hmm. I... <laughs> Star Wars nerd is what Gonky is now. I was taught in the Hornet, do you Take go for the face throat. shot? No, yeah. <laughs> Put you, the knife you in the, ram key, them, ram ram in the speed. throat. Ramming <laughs> speed. Go. Look, you okay. can't run. And the Hornet, you can't run, dude. So you must win. That means at all costs. Donkey, <laughs> you know what? After a full weekend, this is a long time. This is a lot. This is a, this is a lot. It's a lot of Gonky exposure. But hey, <laughs> buy a coin. Oh, there they are. There you go. Oh, nice. nice. Those are nice. Wow. Yep. On a marble countertop, of all things. Dang, man. That is really it's granite. Nice. I think. I don't know. Whatever. Came with the house. Rich people problems. <laughs> it's rich people. <laughs> All right. 
I think we've done enough damage. Yep, here you go. There's no land version of a Russian Sea Wiz. Okay. Well, closest thing would probably be like a 2S6, which you know definitely has a, a third a third millimeter gun system uh, in there. So okay. I'm not sure of an actual, you know, if you look at Sea Wiz, if you're talking about you know a rotating Gatling gun, I don't recall right. a Russian system like that, honestly. Yeah, I don't either. I'm not sure. All right. Uh, Gonky. All right. Final shots. No, Wags, thank you so much, man, for coming on oh, again. Always yeah. a pleasure. Always and a pleasure. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Uh, I, man, the, keep keep doing what you're doing, man. It's awesome. It's fun. It's fun. Actually, the team all gets back tomorrow. So uh, this is very good timing to be able to unwind nice. <laughs> uh, one day before you know the grind starts again. Wombat. Nothing. Thank you for joining thanks us for having me. in the year of our yeah, Lord, thanks. 2024. Yeah. Mover, you, sir. I've got nothing. I've got <laughs> nothing. Wags, thank you for being on the channel. Always, always, love, always love to come. Always, always a good time. Really, yeah. It seems like thanks. these uh, podcasts go longer than most, too, for some reason. Sorry. I can't imagine why. I don't, I don't <laughs> know. Sorry. Probably because we're waiting for Gonky to set up his... his no. His Waiting for Mover's power to come back. <laughs> Power's been on the whole time, dude. I haven't I once had an issue. Gonk, your your uh your motorhome's gonna blow away. I hope not, dude. It's scary out there. So yeah. Well, I All think right. it's more because well, good conversations that go on some really <laughs> cool tangents. I like it's it. The friends you make along the way. That's right. It is. And thank you everybody for joining us. I know. A different yeah. Time. Thanks everyone. Oh yeah. Thank different you time today. Drivers members and we'll yes. be back we're going normal time next week there's no more i think so life no slash national championship birthdays things. yeah so okay. yeah but all right well thank you guys we'll see you next time we'll see y'all have a good one all right bye -bye. Bye -bye.